o'clock. Hey, okay, everybody. We're back. Holy fucking shit. You we're have, having some kind of problem. You have no idea all of the issues yeah. that we were having like before this fucking show started. Holy crap. Yeah, the uh, the routers failed for some reason getting red lights on them. It didn't have anything to do with us. That was the service. And we haven't had that happen uh, for it for like forever. And it yeah. happened well, it started happening like fifteen minutes ago. Yeah, it was kinda of, it happened a couple times. Because I was trying to like upload some files like at the yeah. last minute, like some graphic design shit that I just did that needed to get done and I was kinda of, and then it kept disconnecting and I'm just like, What the fuck? And yeah. then it seems to have resolved itself, whatever Ugh. it was. It wasn't us, it was the service. And then um Jenny was freaking out and everything and I got fucking mad and the damn picture flew off the wall. Yeah, I have a big, you can't yeah. see it obviously, but I had a big uh, Dario Argento Profondo Rosso like, yeah. poster that's framed like right up there. Been there for fucking years. And it's, been, it's not, well, not years, not since year. since about we've moved in here. I put it up when I moved in, and it fell down, I, and it I pulled just, down, yeah. it pulled the, the screw out of the wall, and it pulled down, yeah. it so happened that the frame on that had like my white thing that we're using for the light, for like the soft for the soft bounce on the light. Yeah. So then we had to like fuck around with that and like figure out, we didn't have time to put the shit back up on the wall, but yeah, we put the white thing back up. Yeah, some weird shit. But Jesus Christ. I mean, this is just like on top of, because I was telling Tom before, I was like, I've been really excited about doing this show because I love pirates and, you know, all about like Florida history and stuff. And... I wanted to do, like, I did a lot of research for it, but I wanted to do more. I felt like I didn't do enough because I just haven't had time. I mean, yeah, you the cool. last two or three days I've gotten piled on, like, with yeah. graphic design stuff, which <laughs> doesn't usually happen. It's, like, usually, like, spaced out. But there'll be, like, some time periods when somebody's like, hey, can you do a poster? And I'm just like, yeah, sure. And then, like, seven more people yeah. are like, hey, can you do a poster? I need it today. Hey, can you do a logo? I need that today. Hey, can you do, you know? And so I have, like, this big fucking list of stuff. And I was just kind of yeah. like, really? Paying I... customers have to come first. I know that, but it's yeah. just kind of like. Yeah, she's getting upset about it. And I'm like, Jenny, it's going to be all right. I always got to settle her down because she, she always has more material than we absolutely need. And here's the thing. There's so much, so many cool pirate cases all right, that we could do 10, 20 shows. They probably have whole channels. Well, that's why that I'm just shit. dedicated to like Florida mainly. Yeah, and like I said, I'm be, just I'm just covering yeah, like rock. sort of the main Florida pirates. I'm looking at what she has. It's probably four or five hours worth of material, so it it's not it'd, as it'd, much it'd as it fine. looks like. It'll as much fine. as it looks like. No, I know that, but I'm just saying I don't. I, I kind of wish that I'd had like more time actually the reason why it's so long is because I didn't have enough time to go in there and like edit uh, yeah. out like yeah. stuff that I didn't need You're right. like I did do that a little bit but so yeah. so this is Florida centric piracy mm -hmm. and uh, looks like people are starting to come in there yeah, asking how I'm feeling everybody's asking me how I'm feeling um, today was like the first day where I felt pretty decent I'm um, still not 100%. I can still feel a little bit up in here. Like, I feel like I need to blow my nose a little bit. I might have to go get my fucking snout rag. But, Ew. Uh, I know, it's terrible. Is it so gross? But uh, we'll see. Uh, I drove, went out and got some rum. Some Bacardi yeah, rum. Yeah, so we have for, rum today. Like for, a, yeah. <laughs> for the pirate and a bunch of Welsh You should have got Andrews. Captain Morgan. Uh, they had it, but the um, it was spiced rum. And oh. I don't think that would mix too well with the uh, fruity fruit juice that we have fruity fruit juice. fruity fruit juice okay what kind of fruit juice is that i can't really tell that all is, i can taste is rum in that that is um a tropical punch okay mine's passion fruit i you wouldn't don't like passion fruit I not guess, really for some reason so i don't hate it it's just not yeah. my favorite you know so, what i'm saying the um bacardi puerto rican bacardi rum it the clear stuff is uh more versatile you can mix it with stuff uh, rum is in many ways like a vodka it's it, it's you know it's similar yeah you can mix it with lots of stuff you know what i mean yeah when you start dealing with spice rum though you you can only do that but you can you really kind of i think you're really supposed to drink that fucking just straight well the good shit probably yeah. i yeah. don't know what you i don't really know i'm not a bartender so i don't know what uh, you do with the spice stuff and we just i i make basic bitch cocktails yeah. I, don't, I don't like worry too much about it for you people who don't have access to rum, rum is fucking awesome. <laughs> rum is so awesome. They used to make cakes ba uh, based in rum. When I was a little kid, there was a lot of rum candies in the 70s and rum cake. 
Remember that? Well, you just could go if, get some cupcakes and they had rum in Just them. a few years ago, uh, where I used to work, when we had Christmas parties and somebody would always bring rum balls. Yeah. And man, if you ate enough of those, you'd be uh, yeah. stumbling around a little bit. They were very strong. <laughs> they were really yeah. good, though. <laughs> For some reason, rum kind of started to go a little bit out of style. But they, I guess rum was a food group back when we were kids. That was like a food group. And back in pirate days. Back too. in pirate days. It was well, rum is good in in good. desserts and stuff. Oh, yeah, it mixes it well with like sweet things. Yeah, yeah, you it's know. good. Is it, doesn't baked Alaska have rum in it? Uh, it's like a white cake and you set it on fire. I yeah. well, yeah. I've made baked Alaska before, but it was so long ago that I, I don't remember rum. if it had rum in it or not. Mm. Yeah, Mister Eighty Eight said, "Isn't rum the official drink of pirates everywhere?" Yeah, that's why we got some. Well, that and grog. Which, whatever the fuck that whatever is. Whatever that was. I, mean, grog, <laughs> I think grog might have been kind of like beer. You guys can check on it. Or toilet water. Yeah. They just drank whatever. Yeah. Lighter and there's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of um, old tales, you know what I mean, that they would mix seawater and rum and drink it. I, I doubt that, though. That seems like not a, not a great yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't believe it. You know. Can't guy said rum is good in mint drinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I guess it would be. Yeah, um, that's the thing. It's fucking <laughs> pirates. Yeah, I've been reading a book. I didn't finish it. This is what I wanted to finish this book. It's not necessarily the book that I'm reading is not about Florida pirates specifically, but it's called, I bought it when I was in St. Augustine, and I haven't read it yet, but it's called Under the Black Flag, and it's actually more about why we have like the um sort of popular romantic notion of pirates and like versus the reality like what real pirates were like versus like what movie pirates are like yeah um and and on and where like all of the kind of tropes that we have about pirates yeah. came from yeah the disney pirates absolutely that was not it's not how it was I mean, yeah. some of the stuff. I mean, I haven't got that some far the into the book. Might have been that some way. of the stuff, like the way they dressed and stuff yeah. like that, was kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and somebody asked about uh, parrots, and they said, you know, it seems crazy, but parrots were kind of like a big thing, you know, in trade because they were pretty and they could talk and everything like that. And they were from, like, you know, South America and everything. So a lot of people would pay like for pirates and stuff to bring them yeah. so they said it's not crazy to think that like some pirates did probably I have think there them was, as pets. I think there was one that had a parrot if I remember correctly there's, there's a lot Here, here's something else well a lot of it comes from Treasure Island from Long John yeah. Silver which was not who's not a real guy no but uh, <laughs> they, they, they did know the source material uh, and uh, their pirates were known for doing crazy shit um, they were also kind of pimp like evidently they fucking loved to dress up in finery when they would, some of them they, did yeah when they would come come ashore they weren't like that maybe at sea because you know it's, it's a miserable it's place. impractical but when they would come ashore ashore they would just fucking wear the most outlandish shit um before, i guess before we get into this it looks like people are starting to show up go ahead and dispel a common misunderstanding of pirates pirates were not criminals pirates were the enemies of mankind but they weren't criminals they were Closer to mercenaries of the sea, you had to have a license to be a pirate. A, a, a pirate. Well, no, you had to have a license to be a privateer. A privateer, which was like the same thing, basically. It is, but other pirates, other pirates yeah. did not have any licenses. They just well, did what just the fuck stole. ever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But well, most, that's the distinction. If you were a privateer, you were you a pirate in all, but yeah. you had the sanction of like yeah, your government or your crown or whatever. Yeah, they were kind of just. Most of them had a had a license by either the Spanish Empire, the French, or the or, or the British to raid only the the uh, the vessels of a like an opposing nation. Then they were able to do it. Now some of them did just kind of do whatever the hell they wanted to do, uh, but they were hunted down and killed. And well, not they were all being hunted down and killed anyway. Uh, if you were raiding fucking the Spanish, the Spanish were after you, even though you had that license. And they treated, they would hang you like a common criminal. Um, now, they would sometimes, depending on where you were caught, if it was kind of a more neutral area like, you know, Haiti or fucking Puerto Rico, a governor there might give you leniency, but it, it all depended on what, what nation you were working with and the money powers behind it. But I'm sure Jenny has a lot more details about it 
uh, but they were kind of like mercenaries more than anything else. They were vicious, though, some of them. Bad. Yeah, uh, and I kind of feel like the earlier pirates, they almost, like, not all of them, obviously, but a lot of them kind of had more of, like, a code of honor where it's kind of like, hey, they'd take over your ship. They would go, hey, uh, you want to join our crew? Recruit if you don't, we're, we're going to, like, gonna cut you up and throw you yeah. in the ocean. Yeah. But, so, but a lot of people joined voluntarily, like, because yeah. sometimes... You had to think some of the pirates were like escaped slaves or, you know, yeah. th or indentured servants, things like that, who were looking for a better life and were like, hey, piracy, that sounds like pretty fun. At certain times, they were also in league with Masonic lodges and temples, too. Uh, and they were supporters of democracy, uh, which was a bad word back in those days. Pirate crews were democratic. They um, largely were, yeah. unusually, but yeah. Um, yeah, unlike a lot of the more official uh, yeah. navies and things. Yeah, the Imperials weren't like that. Everything was about uh, what birthright you were, and it was socioeconomic standing, and whatever the whatever the crown said, that's, that's who was in charge. Not pirate crews. Pirate crews tended to elect their captains and elect certain people to positions, and uh, they were all equal. They shared the booty. Whatever yeah. they stole, they short. I mean, the captain and the officers yeah. got more, but like everybody yeah. got a got a you got chunk. you got your payment according to what your job was. Yeah, and uh, skilled labor. You know, the mo the, the the most the, some of the highest paid on the crew would have been navigators. Most people were not real good navigators. You had to be literate, and you had to learn how to use sextant, and you had to know how to charts and everything, and you had to learn how to make maps as you go because they didn't maps weren't completed. And not, no two map was the same, really. Um, but uh, a navigator was the shit. That and a captain. They made the most money. Now, they were weird, too. You know what I mean? Like, they... Edward Teach, when he got mad at his wife, he said, we got to share the booty. He shared his wife with the rest of the crew. They did all kinds of weird shit. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they had no problem with rape, murder, torture, none of that. Um... Yeah, I kind of feel like a little bit there's been kind of like a romanticized yeah. version of them. Yeah, no, these dudes were bad. Uh, yeah, they they were. Yeah, they, they were. They, they were. I would say on par with something like a Central American narco army or cartels. They were like that. I mean, they basically just wanted plunder, and if you were in their way, they a lot of times they would give you the option. Hey, you want to join our crew? Yeah. If you said no, then they would probably just kill you. I think testosterone and adventure had a lot to do with it too. Uh, and yeah, they liked to brag and to be seen as heroic and brave, and they did crazy shit in, in combat. Um, they were not trying to sink enemy ships; they were trying to capture them and yeah, take them alive. Yeah, they wanted the ships. They wanted and they the wanted stuff. the ship, and they wanted to steal the ship. There was a bunch of stuff that, that, that they wanted, and, and they had all the tactics to get this done. And one of the main things was horror. They were horrorists or terrorists, that if you resisted, it would be worse on you. It was better to give up. And they knew exactly what they were doing. And even their flags and shit, they would fly false flags, which that's where the word false flag came from. Did you see it today? It looked like a British flag till they got up right next to you and they'd pull the British flag down and then they'd set up some kind of pirate flag. Psych! Yeah, it'd be usually something like the devil holding an hourglass in one hand and your heart in another. They had all different kinds of, that. you know, it was only a matter of time. And they, and, and really, that's that was the main pirate tactic was time. They would just wear you down over time until you gave up. They would just dog you. you know, and you just couldn't, you couldn't, they would just follow the ship and follow the ship and harass and harass and harass and try to grapple and get and, and attach to the ship and eventually board the ship. And once they got on there, they did bad shit. And they were nuts. They'd set their hair on fire, have cannon fuses coming out of their fucking beard on fire. We have uh, Blackbeard used yeah. to do that. <laughs> but they all, they did all kinds of weird shit. Some Put some matches set up themselves there. themselves on fire Those and jump in. Beard. You know, because they had different, you know, they put a fucking leather, big old thick leather clothing on and fucking cover it with fucking oil and set it on fire and fucking jump into the ship and just to be crazy, you know. They are fucking crazy. But they were pretty good, evidently. They uh, successfully took a lot of ships. They did. Yeah. I mean, they got a lot of stuff. So machismo had a lot to do with this, too. Making money. Making I was, money and being tough. 
I was gonna say too, the whole wooden leg thing. They said that's probably not too crazy either because there are records of like many different pirates that got various limbs shot off during battles, legs, yeah. and arms, and whatnot. Yeah, first aid wasn't what it is today. Well, yeah, they basically just they had just the, lop, lop they just off. had the cook come and like, hey, yeah. you got a cleaver? Yeah. yeah. And then, then they like fucking then they just burn it closed. Yeah, but that made a lot of sense because yeah. they had so much so many problems with. Uh, well, you know, infection. There was no um, antibiotics. So if you had a, a wound, like a bullet, a bullet wound, and it went closed, a lot of times it would fester, especially at sea where it was fucking filthy. So it, Yeah, can you imagine what some of those fucking yeah. ships like, probably smelled like? So yes. a bullet wound going through the arm was more dangerous than cutting the arm off. Sounds fucking con- contrary, but no, true, because... A wound would close up and it would be all fucking festered in there. It was easier to have for a clean cut. Yeah. And then you could cauterize it. Or some of them were good. They would just cut the arm off and make a slit and peel the meat back off the bone a little bit and fucking snap that bone off and then fucking pour a bunch of alcohol on it. Fucking fry, you know. Pour some rum on it. Pour some rum on it. <laughs> and then they'd roll all that meat forward and fucking try to damn sew it back together and pour it in rum and let that heal up, you know. Which, they did that without anesthesia. You yeah. Know? But I had this arm reset without anesthesia, just pulling on it. You can get You can get yourself pretty fucking tough, you know. <laughs> Plus, you're already hurt, so if if they're working fast, it's it's numb, you know. And uh, evidently, they didn't think anything about wrapping a damn bit of leather belt around somebody's knuckles and just knocking you out, and then working real fast, which yeah. that would probably be a. The, the, the that best would probably thing be did. better. It's like, well, we don't have any anesthesia, so pop. knock his ass out <laughs> like that, and you'd be like that, and he'd cut your arm off during that time. You would. Oh, thank you. Oh man, yeah, I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Just sweet spot you right in the jaw. <laughs> Which that—that's what I tell him to do. Take yeah. a couple big belts of damn booze. Knock me out, bro. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> get to work. <laughs> Hurry up, get that out. Yeah, off. and they were working on dudes with fucking tools that weren't sanitary. You know, they might fucking touch flame through it, to it. Uh, but uh, they had just gotten done working on somebody you knew right next to you. Yeah. So, you uh, know, oh well. Well, they're like, hey, you guys have been living in the same ship for a long time. Life you, expectancy. You probably what, traded journeys. Yeah. Life expectancy what it, what, wasn't what it was, too, back then. Yeah, pirates didn't uh, live too long, <laughs> generally. If I remember correctly, I think they, the average one only existed, only lived for about three years, I think, before he was killed. Yeah, I think it was something was, like three yeah. to five years, like once they long. joined. No, they didn't. The, they yeah. usually got killed in battle or, yeah. you know, infection, Infections something. Infections or, you know, uh, or they were captured and fucking executed. Also, um, um, there was an advantage to being on a, on a crew, a pirate crew. Pirate crews allowed women, and Imperial ships didn't. Uh, also, the um, discipline on an imperial ship was uh, a lot r- harsher. Um, not on a pirate ship. It was a little more practical. <coughs> um, they were a little more forgiving about things like being drunk on duty and uh, you know falling asleep. They were pretty. They were because you were. Everyone was considered to be a private or privateer. You were there voluntarily, so it's not like they were forcing you. So they kind of. There was kind of like a feeling of fucking professionalism and brotherhood. Now, if you fucked up, they would punish you, but the punishment may not have been as 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 uh, as ruthless as it would have been on an imperial ship. Like I don't think they'd be keel hauling and, and, and things like that, or making people fucking walk the planks like they did. Although they did do that, but you had to be, I think, a very serious offender. I, mean, I I read that they didn't that walking the plank was largely like a myth. Well, it was execution. Yeah. You know. Um, I know that they would kill haul. Yeah. That, which, if you guys know what that is, they'd tie a, a, a line to your hands and your feet and throw you down underneath the keel and have the ship go over you where there were barnacles on there so it would all cut you up. And then it'd pull you up over the other side. And you'd be all fucking cut up by the time they got you out of there. Pretty bad. Seems like a lot of trouble when they could just as easily like just beat the crap out of you on the ship. Well, they also just whipped you. 
That's well, what I'm saying. That yeah. seems much easier. Give the amount of lashes. Well, uh, British ships were known for that. Yeah. And it was over pretty minor infractions, too. But, you know, the British impressed people into service. They just fucking, you just draft you. You know, a lot of those guys weren't there voluntarily. They weren't really professionals. You just, no choice. They just took you. You know? Yeah, they got shanghai um, Yeah. And then, um, weird things like cabin boys. Uh, which were supposed to be boys, but my understanding, most cabin boys were actually girls. Girls dressed as boys, but that's how you snuck them onto the ship. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say something, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> <clears throat> that was related. Women oh, I think women weren't allowed on ships, except pirate ships. Yeah. There were even female captains, I believe. Yeah, there were some. Um, who would kind of work their way up to the ranks. And uh, don't be. Uh, they weren't good either, though. <laughs> I think it was Calico Jack had two of them, didn't he? Two girlfriends. I don't know. And I think it's what it was. I think it was he had two girlfriends. And when he died, I think they be, one of them became captain for a while. But then they 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 pretty much all. I think the two girls got off. Um, one of they were they got sentenced to death. I think in Puerto Rico or Haiti, I forgot. And. Uh, both of them were pregnant, so they got a, they got away with it. If I, or at least they both claimed to be pregnant. I don't remember. That was probably something you did back then if you were going to get executed. Yeah, you just claimed to be pregnant. But, um, yeah, there were a lot of female pirates. None that were really associated with Florida all that much. But I remember I was reading um, something about just, like, piracy all over the world. And they said, actually, one of the most formidable uh, pirate captains in Asia was, I believe, a Chinese woman. She had, like, a fucking massive fleet of, like, pirate ships, and she was mm. one of the most powerful pirates at the time. But, yeah, so, but there, there were some. Those are the ones that Disney tried to include, but then the Chinese government says, no, you can't make us look like pirates. Isn't that the, isn't that the one that you're talking about? I mean, about? there's, well, I don't know, but um, her name was Mrs. Chang. Okay. But, um, I mean, there are pirates everywhere. Pirates aren't just, I know everybody knows Pirates of the Caribbean, which is kind of what we're talking about, but everywhere has pirates. They still yeah. have pirates nowadays. Yeah. You know, if you, like, are a rich person and you're out in your yacht one day and come across some pirates, they're going to come on there and take all your shit. In America, the most famous pirates are basically British pirates and French pirates. Yeah. yeah almost, I mean, I feel like... 90, well, what I was going to say was that um, somewhere between, like, 80 and 95% of pirates were originally, like, official, like, Navy. They were in their navies or whatever their country yeah. is. Mostly English. A lot of them were English. But, yeah, there was, like, some French ones, too. The granddaddy of Maul in American culture would be Blackbeard, which um, I think he was from... I think he was actually from Ireland, if I remember correctly. I think, uh, but he was considered to be British. Although, if you actually trace where he lived, he was mostly living in America. More, kind of more like an American guy. But, uh, you know, America was different back then. It was part of the British Empire. But he was kind of the granddaddy, Blackbeard. He's a pretty good pirate. Yeah. Like I said, he doesn't have all that much to do with Florida, although no. um, one pirate that was on his crew for a time did have something to do with Florida, so we'll get into that okay. in a little bit. So but we're not going to talk too much about... Well, yeah, okay. I mean, I had a couple of uh, shout-outs. All right. I think, uh, hey, you want to say, like, thanks for your shirt that you have? Oh, because yeah, that's... yeah. Getting, got a shirt from Mexico here. Yeah. My boy said that to me, Keith. Yeah. It's, really got, it, it's murder all embroidered. Hornet. This is murder a top Hornets. notch. Also known as Murder Hornets. It's a top notch embroidered Harley Davidson shirt from Mexico. Yeah, it's embroidered. Yeah. Ooh, it's fancy. Yeah. Yeah. And he also sent me that, um, that skeleton bride. Yeah. I think I put her back there though already because she yep. was right there earlier. But I showed her on her earlier show. Yeah, I don't think Murder Hornets is on there. I haven't seen him no, he's not so here far. Yet. I haven't seen him. Uh, but also, I want to give a big thanks to Miguel for sending me a PayPal donation earlier today or yesterday, I think it was. So thank you very much for that. And I think that's probably all. Is that all the shout outs that we had today? Yeah. I wanted to remind everybody to go and subscribe to my Scare Salon channel. I just posted another video over there today, like earlier today, which is about the weird British sci-fi movie Extra. So go over there and check it out if you haven't. I posted about it on the um, community tab, but you know. Yeah, John Smith said Blackbeard's first mate was called Israel Hands. 
Robert Lewis Stevenson used his name as a character in Treasure Island. Yep, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Murder Hornet said, I'm here, just laying down listening. <laughs> oh, okay. Mr. 88 said, yes, yeah, Somalia has been doing a ton of pirating lately, and they tend to kill everyone. Yeah, somehow it's just kind of like, I guess because the pirates of old, um, because it's so far distant in time, and we've had like all this fun, like Treasure Island, and pirates of penzance and then now and more recently the pirates of the caribbean movies and stuff so i feel like people have like a more romantic uh conception of pirates like that like if you talk about the somali pirates they're just like well that's that's not as fun you know what i mean i mean but like back then it probably wasn't fun either like if you were on a ship and your fucking shit got attacked by pirates you'd probably be hating life you know? yeah i've seen a lot of videos of somali pirates getting ate the fuck up too They'll just come up in a damn motorboat with a bunch of AKs and RPGs trying to, uh, I guess, take some kind of a superior vessel and they just chew them up with fucking 50 cals. So they don't always know what they're doing. I think that was actually something kind of like a Navy vessel that they once tried to take because it looked military. They just fucking chopped that boat up. So <clears throat> They bit off more than they yeah. could chew. Yeah, it's not happens. Like it, was. it happens. Granther says the biker babes at the Oasis will think your shirt is dope. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually thinking about going, but I just don't feel right yet. Yeah, don't go spread your cooties over. Yeah, spreading it. cooties. <laughs> spreading your cooties. Yeah, you haven't been in a while. A couple weeks. Yeah. Every time been... I show back up, every time I show up and it's been a while since I've been there, they they fucking start freaking out. Where the hell you been? And a bunch of free drinks come and everything. Hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. If you leave like long enough in between, yeah, so nobody feels like yeah. you're just showing up they every get day mad. to get They're free where shit. Because they live in those places. Yeah, you know. <laughs> where are you, loser? I can't, yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> the music will get to you. You know. That's probably why I never. So, know. but I got that damn app so I can bypass their music and start the damn uh, jukebox. So I was putting all kinds of shit on there. What was funny is that the girls like it, though. Yeah. Because yeah, they're, they're kind of sick of that country. I can't blame them. So I would just start spinning some stuff that we maybe hear at Ibar. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, I like that one. I put fucking uh, Boys Don't Cry from The Cure on there. They like that <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. So they know the same music. <laughs> just they don't get to hear it all the time. Well, yeah. They're probably our age, aren't they? Yeah, they're our age. Slasher Fred said, if you guys ever watch that movie, The Prince's Bride, that's a great fucking movie, by the way. Uh, the character of Wesley is also a pirate. That's right, the Dread Pirate yeah. Roberts. The Dread Pirate Roberts. That's like a whole... You've never seen that movie, have you? Mm. Oh, it's good. It's really good. Uh, Mr. 88, you forgot the pirate movie with Christy McNichol. I wish I could forget it. No, seriously, that movie... I saw... That was one of those movies that was on, like, every day, it seemed like, on Cinemax or whatever. Uh... And for whatever reason, when I was a kid or and a teenager, I loved it. Uh, it's actually, it's the Pirates of Penzance is what it is, but they didn't call it that. And they changed the story around a little bit and they changed some of the songs. Like they put more contemporary pop songs in there. I haven't seen it in a long time. But I'm sure, I'm always kind of like afraid to watch it again because I used to love it so much when I was a kid, even though I knew it was bad, like even back then, but... I'm like I'd probably watch it nowadays and just like fucking cringe the whole fucking time. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I give two shits for fucking pirate movies. All right, there, there's really only one pirate movie that I like, and it has Michael Caine in it, and it's called The Island, and it's a <laughs> Florida movie about fucking pirates in the modern era in the '80s. They find some old pirates that were living out. Of, it's based on a book, and Michael Caine, he takes his son out to the Keys for a vacation. And they fall, they, they fall into this fucking trap that was laid by some pirates that were living in a fucking island out there in the Keys. And they're the descendants of real pirates from this era. And they're still out there doing it. And for the, the modern world has left them behind. They're still, they're, their speech is still like something out of the 1600s. They're using a mixture of old weapons and, 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 and you know, like, and modern weapons, and they're stealing stuff, and you know, raiding fucking uh, 
sailboats and getting their hands on cocaine and doing all kinds of weird shit. It's a good movie called The Island from, I think it was 1980, I think. And if you guys haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. It's, that's one of the best pirate movies. And evidently, there are some uh, re uh, fucking regulars who follow the show have read the book. They said the book is even better. Did Peter Benchley write it? I don't know. The same guy that wrote Jaws? I don't know. Or am I just totally Maybe. pulling that out of my butt? But it's got Michael Caine, and it's got the dude from uh, fucking who played the... David Warner. David Warner. The guy who played Master Control from Tron. He's in it. And uh, Jack the Ripper from Time After Time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's fucking, it's a good flick. They're running out of women, and they're all inbreeding, too, in there. Because they've been Man, on that I hate when that too happens. Long. I hate when that Yeah. And they're fucking still trying to go through this old book and fucking talk about Mr. Dr. Brazil. And, yeah, it's pretty good. Gramther's Hammer, that was called uh, Cutthroat Island, that movie that you're thinking of. What? The name of the pirate movie that killed both the careers of Matthew Modine uh, and Gina Davis. Although Matthew Modine came back, he's on Stranger Things now. But yeah, yeah, that I think it was called Cutthroat Island. I didn't see it. Muppet Treasure Island, yeah, that's another good pirate movie. See, there you go. There's good pirate movies. I mean, everything with the Muppets in it is good. Come on. I mean, Muppets Take Manhattan is probably my favorite. Well, I don't know. Actually, no. I think The Great Muppet Caper is my favorite. Yeah. But Muppet Treasure Island is good too. And Muppet Christmas Carol is also good. Mm. Hugo said, uh, I just saw The Island with Michael Caine for the first time. Is a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Dave's here. Hey, he also loves Muppet Treasure Island. Yeah. Look at the, uh, the Island with uh, Michael Caine is actually a movie when you actually peel it back. It's a movie about masculinity and fatherhood. About how modern dads cannot offer what ancient dads could offer. All this damn fucking high adventure. But then Michael Caine, being a Korean War veteran, in the end, no, it was better than what than what Pirate Dad could offer. And now you said, what the fuck is with Dad? Pirate Dad. Well, he, he had captured, they, had cap, they were capturing children and raising them to become members of their pirate band. And they captured Michael Caine's son and got him to fucking adopt a new pirate identity, two barb. And he almost killed his own dad. To, yeah, that's to, right. Yeah, but in the end, uh, fucking his dad fucking had skills that pirates didn't have. Once he got hold of that fucking M two fifty, and fucking cut those dudes down on the back of that down coast guard fucking shit, on a coast guard ship. It's on the back of I think it was a fucking Oliver Perry class fucking missiles cruiser. Fucked him up. It's a good movie. Good movie. It is good. Oh, it's a forgotten classic. I got it on Blu-ray. Best pirate movie out there. Captain Crazy says, is the island related to the movie The Island with Steve Buscemi? Is that a remake? I don't yeah. think so. I haven't seen that, but I don't... I'd never heard that The Island got remade. But it's possible uh, that, it, that it absolutely... They would never remake The Island. Well, I don't know about that. They remake everything else. They, would, yeah, they, they might would. get around to it. It didn't, it didn't succeed back in the day. But I think that might have been the same guy who wrote Jaws. I think that's right. Yeah, if somebody did say it was, yeah. I yeah, it was I think, I think it's right. It's a, it, evidently, was, the book was even better. I wouldn't uh, mind reading it, actually. I did, yeah, and I will say, I read the book of Jaws, yeah. and I didn't love it. The movie's way better, yeah. which I don't usually say. Like, 99% of the time, the book is better. But Jaws, I think the movie is better. I, but, I, I could vouch for the movie The Island, though, Michael Caine. 1980. Kind of like the sequel, the unofficial sequel to Jaws. Real good. <laughs> kind of. We still haven't watched Jaws 4. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. looked it up and I was just like, well, it's not really free. we got to pay to watch it. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to. So yeah. it's, it's, I remember it being funny, but you know what I mean. Already? Holy crap. Yeah. Lord of the Flies. Yeah. I mean, you know. Now I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, The Great Muppet Caper was another movie that was always on cable in the early 80s. Yeah, that's right. And Oracle said Muppets make everything better. I agree. Gramther Saber, Jimmy Buffett has a song called A Pirate Looks at 40, A Pirate Looks at 40, which he still sings at age 80. Is Jimmy Buffett still alive? Jesus Christ, man. I've told that Jimmy Buffett story about how the guy I used to work for who was like the world's biggest Jimmy Buffett fan. Holy shit. I was just like, ugh. If I had to hear that fucking CD one more time, <laughs> I don't know what would have fucking happened. I'm like, I'm just gonna like explode or do something. Uh, yeah, The Fog, that also had kind of pirates in it. They were pirates, weren't they, in The Fog? Yeah, I guess they were. See, pirates are cool, I mean, you know. 
Yeah, that's what we were just talking about, Dave. We were just talking about uh, Jaws 4 the other day. Because <laughs> I saw it in the theater, actually, when it first came out. Um, but Tom's never seen it. And I was like, you got to see Jaws 4. It's, like, so awful. I don't even think it's as bad. Okay, I think Jaws 3 is worse. But I haven't seen Jaws 4 in a long time. So I'm willing to concede that Jaws 4 might be worse. But Michael Caine is in it. And it's just, like, the premise of it is just so ridiculous. <laughs> Like, that the shark is, like, smart enough to, like, I'm going to follow you motherfuckers all the way down to fucking Florida. Michael Caine knew how to be in a movie, though. He, based on his, his movie, based upon what hotel you're going to stay in. Well, yeah, that's yeah. right. We went, that was his whole, like, uh, yeah. that was his whole MO. He knew what he was doing. And do you guys, if any of you guys are British, they wasn't there, like, a little kid's cartoon show about a pirate called Captain Pugwash? I remember there was a little thing that was called Captain Pugwash. Because I used to think that was, like, the funniest pirate name ever. But yeah, see, that's what I mean. It's just, it just seems like nowadays, pirates are like kids' characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though back in the day, I mean, they're they're kind of like uh, rapists and murderers and plunderers and shit. Yeah. Like that. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. See, I'm good. I'm I'm glad that I'm a good influence on you people, making y'all watch the island. Hugo said, "Yeah, that's the first, he just saw it. It's a good movie. It is a good movie." It's a forgotten classic. If you haven't seen it, you gotta see it. John Smith says it's like watching Jaws. Yeah. It's like Jaws, but it's pirates. Jaws, but with pirates. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. 88 good. said no Jaws the Revenge is worse okay I'll, I'll I'll take your word for it like I said I've seen Jaws 3 much more recently than I've seen Jaws 4 so I don't remember like I said I saw Jaws 4 in the theater and I maybe saw it on cable after that one time but I don't think I've seen it since then um yeah Jaws, but Jaws 4 with a roaring shark and Michael Caine who can only get hot for widow pussy <laughs> <laughs> Can he only get hot for specifically widows whose <coughs> husbands were killed by a shark? Because did Brody get killed by a shark or no? Mm. Now I, I can't I remember. remember. Or did he just die of like a heart attack or something boring? I don't remember. He didn't go out like a G. He didn't go out like fucking Quint getting eaten by the shark. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how, how over time that they have kind of evolved into being children's characters. Yeah. And they were got like, they were fucking... They were fucking the enemies. I went seriously. They were the enemies of mankind. I went to because Saint Augustine. Because you know, you, last year, like I said, I went on vacation like for five days or something, and I went to Saint Augustine, where I've been lots of times. It's a it's a really cool place, and there's a lot of pirate lore around it. Because when I'll get into that in a bit, because Saint Augustine was like at the core of like a lot of pirate shit that happened here, and there is a pirate and treasure museum. <coughs> in St. Augustine. And they, it's cool because they have like a lot of displays of stuff that they found in shipwrecks like from around the state and whatnot. But the museum, I mean, it's a regular museum, but it's very much geared toward children. And when I was there, and I think it was June, so it was summertime and school was out, that place was like fucking packed with kids. Packed with kids. Yeah. And they have like all kind of like kid friendly stuff for them to do like on top of all the other stuff but one of the coolest things they have in there other than all the stuff from the shipwrecks is they actually have one I believe of only three surviving <coughs> Jolly Roger flags <coughs> you know there's the iconic like Jolly they, they have one there and it's actually like in pretty decent shape <coughs> for as old as it is yeah. it doesn't look quite as badass I mean it looks very homemade obviously which it was it doesn't look quite as badass as the ones nowadays. But and they made that shit up as they were going along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything kind of was like that. I just think it's funny how how their lore has been blown. I imagine pirates would probably laugh. They'd probably laugh if they if they had seen, you know, what 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 their lore had grown into. You know, what I mean, little kids were into it. They probably just think that was fucking funny. Um, I imagine they probably yeah, would. But. We have to fucking reiterate this shit. If you chose to partake in the pirate lifestyle for money and glory, it would be an elusive mirage. Most of them didn't live but about four years. So the whole idea about getting rich, you don't live long enough to spend it. 
I think that's kind of why was, pirates were known for spending. Like they'd they'd yeah. make a big haul and they then they'd be like, right "Woo!" They'd go right to the tavern and the brothel and like just up. blow it. Yeah. <laughs> because they knew they were gonna live. Hell. Yeah. They would just they, go party for a few weeks. Yeah. So it was not like a long term life strategy, even for the captains. They didn't really live that long. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of like uh, it's a suicide pact. Which tells me that it wasn't really, it didn't, I don't think it had much to do with the money. I think it was just, uh, it was lust for adventure. It was, and it was well, and I think some people, too, didn't really have anywhere else no to go. They yeah. really didn't have anything else to do. It's kind of suicidal. You know, they would yeah. a kamikaze. No, no, uh, there was no other, uh, no other life plan for them, you know. Which is kind of strange when you think about it, because if you had the skills and the equipment, you could just go to the new world and go walk out and fucking become an Indian, which did people did it all the time. Yeah, and live a lot longer and have a much better uh, fucking uh, lifestyle than a pirate. Fuck being a pirate. Okay, you're out of fucking sea. On those old fucking vessels? Yeah, I don't, think I, would, crazy. I don't think I would like that. Yeah. I mean, it would depend, though. It's like, if, you're, if your life was, like, way suckier than that. Like yeah. I said, a lot of them were, like, escaped slaves and stuff, mm. which I'm sure being a pirate was better yeah. than that. But it was all mm. kind of like, I don't know. Like I said, some people joined, a lot of people did join voluntarily. Yeah. So I imagine that some people's circumstances in life were shitty enough that they were kind of like, yeah, I'm going to try this shit out for a little while. I joined while. the U.S. Army Airborne during wartime to go to the first Gulf War. I fucking love risk and adventure. But you got to mitigate that shit with reality and what projected lifespans are about, you know. And um, n modern naval service is boring. I wouldn't do it. I Fuck it. I don't really... I respect it, but I wouldn't do it. Uh... It's not as dangerous as it was, and you're on ships all the time, and no thanks. I'm not a big fan of the ocean. To I want to be, be on the land. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and if I'm on, not on the land, I want to be flying. You know, I love fucking air flight, aircraft, and being in choppers and stuff, and CH 47s, and fucking C 130s, and fucking C 5 galaxies, and 747s, and mountain climbing, and hiking, and doing infantry shit. I fucking love that. If I were to ever choose back in those days, back in the 15, 16, 17, 1800s, of what it was I'd like to do, it's like, well, look, if you want to live a life of adventure, you know, what would you choose? It would not be piracy. Hell no, I'd join a fucking Indian tribe. You know, I probably would as well. Out on the Great Plains or it. something. You'd live a lot better, and you'd live longer. Yeah, and you wouldn't, every time you went out, you wouldn't have to worry about getting your fucking face shot off by no. the cannon. Well, you're not on the sea. Yeah, that's It's too. like the sea, but it's not the sea. You can't drown. You could always survive. And there's not sharks in there's the land. Sh yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot more to of. look at. And there's horsemanship, which I fucking love horses, too. It was in the horse industry. I can ride, jump, and do hunter-jumper stuff. Um... I could re if if this shit ever goes Mad Max and that's the end of cars and this and that I'll go straight like out something out of the postman, fucking where I can get horses and fucking live on the back of the horse if I had to fucking train other people how to do it. At my age, I could only really have be my my value is to be a trainer. And um, no, you want to be a fucking plains Indian. They had it made. That was the lifestyle right there, in those days. Technology caught up with it, though. You know, you yeah, but back through. then it probably. But back then it was good, but you just now you can't run through other people's properties, front fences and shit, cars, you know, radio, that stopped all that. Laws, you know. And justice for me says in Saint Augustine the pirates couldn't even touch the Spanish though in terms of bloodshed. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Um, yeah, I want to actually one thing that I didn't really know that much about, but like when I was in Saint Augustine last time, was. Uh, the Spanish massacring the French Huguenots that came there because like I said they were Protestants and the Spanish crown was Catholic uh, so Huguenots had set up a kind of like outpost in what is now Jacksonville in the north part of Florida 
and a lot of the Spaniards were like, no, 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 can't have that. Uh, so they would basically go and just like fucking wipe them out in horrible ways. And actually, in Saint Augustine, uh, they wiped out like a whole bunch of them. Like they just executed all at one time. And that's the reason that that inlet now is called Matanzas because that means slaughter. Mm. So yeah, we I learned that on the tour <laughs> when I was there. We did learn like Florida history in school, but I think I forgot a lot of it. Because I think most of the Florida history we learned was mostly probably like elementary school and junior high. I don't remember doing a lot of Florida history in high school, but it is like... what? Kevin Smith's talking about Coke and Bacardi. It used to be my drink, but I'm sober for 15 years. I relive it by watching you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Watching us get fucked up. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And Justin for me said they were absolute criminals. They're made out to be adventurers. Or they're called buccaneers or swashbucklers. Yeah, I think buccaneers, and I'm kind of getting to why, like, where that word came from and stuff like that. But that's, yeah, I, I kind of feel like that word now, it sort of, like, evokes, like I said, like, swashbuckling. Like, ooh, I'm Errol Flynn or whatever like that. I mean, yeah. buccaneers, you know what that means? The reason the word buccaneers comes from, um, I think it's an Arawak Indian word. And, uh, Bukan, and I think the French like called them, and all that was was just the somebody who smoked stuff, right? Well, yeah, it was just like yeah. the thing they set up to like smoke meat on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, some of the people that smokers, uh, yeah, that's basically what it was. Like from fucking Waterworld, right? Smokers. And because some of the people that were associated with piracy like used so that same smoking, method, smoking like fish. with as the Arawak Indians, yeah. then they started calling them buccaneers. Yeah. People so smoking, smoking meat. And I mean Tampa Bay, their uh, yeah. their football team obviously is called the Buccaneers. Danny's Tampa Bay talking Buccaneers. Talking about Ponce de Leon. Uh, yeah. I don't think Ponce de Leon could be considered a pirate, though. Well, Ponce de Leon was more kind of like a, like a, more kind of like a conquistador in a way. He was an explorer, but yeah, more like a conquistador. Which there's not. I mean, that's is that like a distinction without a difference, though? I mean, yeah. I kind of feel like well, pirate has a pretty specific has a pretty specific definition in the sense that you're on a ship and you're targeting other ships that are carrying cool shit yeah. and taking their shit. Yeah. That's pretty much the definition of pirate. A privateer is somebody that's doing that but has the official sanction of a government or the royal family or whatever to do that. But it's still doing pirate yeah. shit. And all my Mexican friends in there are mad at me talking about the conquistadors. But look, all y'all down there in Central and South America, you know, you know, I grew up in the culture. You're all a blend of the Maya and the, and, and the conquistadores from the to, from the long, La Conquista. Fucking, if you if you actually look at Central and South American history, it's like some fantasy written by fifteen year old boys. Okay, they were all badasses. They were just all. It's like something out of damn Star Trek. Okay. Um. The conquistadores were cool too, okay? Just kind of landless nobles trying to make a name for themselves in a new world, marrying local women and trying to figure out a place for themselves. That didn't last long though, you know? It was just one of the things that happened. It was immigration. They're just immigrating. That's. <laughs> Too bad there were people already there. It, it's always that way, though. It's there are always people. Oh, already you're, there. oh, this is our shit now. <laughs> Bye. There's always people already there. It's just the well, not always. Uh, the, uh, Back his, in those days, history was always like that. But you know, I don't know. I don't think that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's the uh, way it was. Well, I know that. It's the way history goes. Just, well, it was that, always yeah, that but way. saying like, oh, that's the way it is, or yeah. I don't think that's cool, those are two separate ideas. Nothing's cool. <laughs> Nothing is cool if you look at it at a certain extent. Well, you can look at the Toltecs and the Toltec statues there. They weren't from here. Those Toltec look, those are islanders, if you ask me, looking at those heads. Those aren't Mesoamericans. So everybody was coming here for tens of thousands of years in different successive waves of immigration and or migration you know immigration is something only from the that concept comes from the era of the nation state 
this is before nation states. People moved around. This is the way it was. But uh, you look at the, the, the Mesoamericans that <clears throat> the conquistadores were dealing with were all, or an admixture. They were already mixed from centuries before because uh, they were just a mixture of things from all over the world. And you look at the Toltec statues, man. Some people say, well, that looked kind of like the Maori. But you could also say they might have been African because there are Africanized looking people on little islands all out, out the world. The Africans didn't stay on Africa. They, they were seamen too. They fucking were sailing and fucking conquering new lands and islands and just everybody moved. Everybody was always moving. Just the way it is. Humans, humans, you know. That's how they are. Evil, hairless monkeys. But that's what you're supposed to be. Somebody asked what uh, pirates we're going to be talking about. Probably going to cover, I mean, hopefully, if I get around to it. If you get um, around to it, yeah. Sir Francis Drake, uh, who is a privateer. Yeah. Uh, Robert Searle, Henry Jennings, Black Caesar, and uh, Jose Gaspar, who is probably not a real guy, but I want to get into him because so much of the culture of modern-day Tampa is tied up in the legend about him. So I kind of want and where the legend came from, and I thought that was really interesting. So I wanted to get into that as well. Um, but yeah, I think there was like something else that I wanted to answer. Do, 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 do. Oh, Danny Rowling said, it would be sick if Juan Ponce de Leon actually discovered a fountain of youth that was still alive. <laughs> How fucking hilarious would that be? I've been to the fountain of youth the or at least like the park that he's still like he never found it obviously because there's no such thing but basically there is it's like a sulfur spring is yeah. what it is and it's in saint augustine they have it you can go and i didn't go this last time but i've been there before you can just go in there and like drink from it and there's like little mummified bodies and the, shit. Con the, conqu the conquistadores were fucking fascinating they were looking for a lot of things they were looking for the fountain of youth they were looking for the city of gold. What was the, what they Eldorado. called? Eldorado. Eldorado. They were looking. You, you can't judge these people by modern standards. They were being heavily motivated by legend and religion and just things that they dreamt up. It is quite fascinating. Like I said, most of human history was like it was written by a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yes, I'm going to find the place where water comes out of the ground. If you drink it, you stay young forever. <laughs> That's just like, it's funny to me that That's they, like some that they believe would, that. Yeah. It's just funny to it's me. It's like some 15 year old boy would think of. Like you would actually like go out. And I don't There's know. There's money on this. I mean, to be honest, I don't think that was his only goal. He's like, oh, well, maybe if I find it cool. But he's like, I think that he was like looking for other shit. Like fucking gold and slaves and shit Who like knows? that. Like they all were back then. Well, they were looking to profit. That's what to, I'm saying. It, when they were mercenaries. But I'm not saying that he didn't believe in it, and he's like, ooh, if I find out about it, I'm going to go check that shit out. Yeah. Like, he probably did. But I don't know if he... I don't think he did the whole thing just for that, because, um, you know, uh, Ferdinand and Isabella, they, like, backed up his fucking... Or, no, I'm talking about Christopher Columbus. What the fuck uh, I mean, I, no, but I'm no. just talking about... He, you know, he had, like, um, people behind him that were, like... Well, no you're, you're, no, you're looking at it through modern eyes. The modern eyes of rationality and reason. No. No. Sherwandi, the first emperor of China, was sending people out into the ocean to come back and find the same goddamn thing. Uh, a fucking ta some kind of a liquid metal you could drink that would keep you fucking young forever. Mercury, or, try that. Mercury, out. yeah, yeah, mercury. And, See and, how long that lets yeah, you live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no. They were dumb. Well, not dumb. People will believe all kinds of crazy things, you know what I mean? And they have always believed in crazy things. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, they'll have the money and the power of nation states or tribes and kingdoms, and they'll fucking divert it. I want you to build the baddest fucking navy you could ever fucking think of with all this high-tech shit. Even steam engines. Go out and try to find the fucking the elixir of ever everlasting life. Oh, shit. And then they put you on that task. Yeah. To, to go out and find that. No, people believed in ri ridiculous shit. And they still do. It's just that we don't we don't think it's ridiculous. You know, but centuries from now, 
they will look back at us and fucking laugh at us for believing what we believe in. You know, I don't think it's. Yeah, we we <coughs> we fantasize about more realistic shit than we used to, but no, two hundred years from now, people are gonna laugh at us for being simpletons. You know, and believe. But in a way, that's good because that's like progress. It's pretty, yeah, you're right. That's just how it works. You know what I mean? Right. It's all right. All right, so I'm out of ice already. Look at my fucking ice melted. I'll refresh that whole thing for you. Okay, yeah, might as well while you're up. Sure. And I can actually start the show. Start the show. Because we have so much to get through. Because like I said, even though I didn't get as much research in as I wanted to, but I did manage to get like quite a bit. And I'm sure I left some shit out. But, oh, I found this great video on YouTube that actually was really helpful because it helped me like kind of structure... Because whenever I do a show like this, I get, like, really excited, like, to do the topic. But then when I actually get to research it, I'm like, oh, shit, there's, like, 40 million things, like, all over the place. It's like, what am I going to cover? What am I going to leave out? Um, so I found this really cool lecture, and it was from earlier this year. And I think it was from the um, Tampa, the History Museum that they have over there, which I've been to a couple times, and I used to live over there. And they had a talk last January, this past January by um, a guy who'd written a book about Florida Pirates. And he gave like an hour long presentation about it. And it was really, really interesting. Like he dressed up like a pirate too, which that's kind of his thing. He's like a living history type of guy. Um, but yeah, he actually gave a really interesting talk. And that was like, so I listened to that earlier and I was like, that was a really good in like helping me like structure my notes and like figure out what I should put in and what I should leave out and stuff like that. I also read another book, I found it on uh, Kindle Unlimited, which I think is just called the Florida, what was it called? Florida Pirate History or the Pirate History of Florida or something like that. It's not really a book. It was like more like a pamphlet. I think it was only like 40, 50 pages, but that kind of went into a lot of stuff, but I was kind of like looked askance at it a little bit because he talked about Jose Gaspar as though he was a real person. And I'm pretty sure 99.99% .99 of historians have come to the conclusion that Jose Gaspar was not a real person, was like not a real pirate. Um, like I said, I still want to talk about him anyway. I uh, want to talk about the legend because it's tied in so much with Tampa, with like Tampa's history. They still have the Gasparilla Festival, which is kind of like Mardi Gras, but pirate themed. And they do that pretty much every year, like around the same time as Mardi Gras. I think it's from like January to March. They have all they have a big pirate parade, and it's like it's a huge, huge fucking deal. So, and it's all based on. I mean, I think they kind of know that it's based on like not a real guy, but there's like a lot of legends about the guy. So I kind of want to get into that at the end if I have time. Uh, so we'll try to do that. Like I said, I'm trying to keep it to Florida. So some of the pirates we're talking about did some other shit like in other places. But I don't want to go too much into that because I'm trying to keep it more Florida-centric, if that yeah. makes any and sense. Yeah, please hit that like, bu like button if you guys uh, can. Some, guys, some of you guys are on smart TVs and can't do it. But Yeah. Because I think the more likes that it has, the more likely it is to be recommended to yeah. other people, right? right? Yeah. I mean, I th well, the thing about it is, like, this, this channel and my new channel, they still get recommended to people because pretty much every day or every other day, I'm mm -hmm. still getting messages from, oh, my God, I just found people? this channel. Oh, okay. And, good, good. Uh, you know, oh, my God, you're talking about this movie or whatever. Sometimes it's like our old videos or sometimes right. it's more recent ones. So people are still, like, stumbling <coughs> across it, which is good. But like I said, I talked earlier about... We're still, th still a small channel, though. Yeah, relatively. I mean, you yeah. know, there's... I mean, we're bigger than a lot of other horror channels yeah. that I like, but... Or we're about the same size as some of them. But I was talking earlier about maybe moving my Flickers of Fear and Tomes of Terror uh, series like over to the new channel, but I'm not gonna do that until the new channel has enough views, subscribers, stuff like that to monetize it. Right. Because at the moment, you know, I can monetize those videos on this channel, but I can't monetize anything on John that channel. John says he found us because of a book review. That well, there you go. What book was it, do you remember? Were you the one that said it was House of Leaves? I remember somebody said that it was House of Leaves. I should probably, I don't know, it's like, I always kind of feel like maybe I should cover more stuff that's well known, like, to get people, but then I was like, well, then there's, like, so much competition, and a lot of times, when I do something, like, really weird and obscure, like, I get a lot of people being like, oh my god, I can't believe, it. I thought I was the only person that saw this movie or read this book or whatever, so, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard, that's why I kind of, like, just try to cover everything, and, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, it was House of Leaves. That's right. I remember you saying that. But yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I reviewed that book and I didn't even like scratch the surface. I just, you know, but I feel that about all my videos. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't like cover what I wanted to cover. I don't know. I have problems. Uh, all right. So Florida in particular, uh, very, very rich history of pirates, both real and legendary, as we'll get into in a bit. So probably the cities and the areas most commonly associated with piracy, at least in Florida. I mean, it happened all over the state, but St. Augustine is a big one. Uh, the so-called Treasure Coast, which it wasn't called that until later after they found like some big wrecks there. And that's pretty much where it's like from Port St. Lucie down to like some Miami-Dade kind of area. It's like on the East Coast. Uh, also got the Florida Keys, obviously, uh, and Tampa on the Gulf Coast. Tampa is very, very pirate, very pirate-centric city. And that's on the Gulf of Mexico, in case you didn't know. Uh, so yeah, very pirates of the Caribbean area. So... Uh, we think maybe the estimate is that between 1715 and 1726, there were uh, reportedly about 5,000 pirates sailing the Florida Straits and the Gulf Coast looking out for those Spanish galleons and all of their treasure ships. Because the thing about Florida that made it such an attractive pirate haven was that when you had the Spanish that came in, they loaded up all the all the booty that they got from, you know, Central and South America, gold, silver, whatever the hell. And then they would have to, like, come around Florida, like, and they'd usually, like, stop in Havana or they were going and then go around and, like, up to the Atlantic to go back to Europe. So all around the coasts of Florida, there were, like that was really, really good places to have like pirate bases because particularly around the Tampa area and on the East coast of Florida as well, there's tons and tons of like little islands and little inlets and like little bays, like inland bays and stuff. And so there was a lot of places for pirates to hide. And the thing about it too, was that pirates, even though I kind of feel like because of the movies, you have like the popular conception of this big, like massive pirate ship in general, pirates liked smaller ships yeah uh, but one because they were faster and two because their hulls were shallower so you could go in like shallower water so like if there was a bigger ass ship like chasing you you could go into like some inlet and they couldn't find you because they would run aground yeah, i think they called them sloops yeah yeah i think a sloop now i'm not sure i'm not super up on like maritime uh terminology but i think a sloop is what like one or two mass right if it's more yeah. than that then it's like a ship yeah that's at least that's what I'm. It was I don't a know small, I'm, nimble ship that you could yeah. board another ship. You you could use it to board another ship. Because they they eventually wanted to board. Yeah, that's right. And and here's the thing: they're, they're on TV. They're always showing you showing them going after some kind of a warship. That's not what they were looking for. They were looking for cargo ships. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that was their whole thing. That's where. Yeah, they wanted cargo, so you didn't need. Um, a heavily armed ship because you, the last thing you want to do is to sink the ship. You didn't want to sink the enemy ship. You're trying to board it and to steal as much as you could. And if the sh and, and if, if if the cargo vessel was any good, you wanted to steal the ship too. Yeah, because even if you didn't use the actual ship, you could actually disassemble the ship and right. use that to like for other right. shit. And if it was loaded full of a bunch of what they call booty, you couldn't put that on the sloop. Yeah. You had to keep it in the ship. So you had to steal the ship and take it somewhere to, to an island, offload it, and yeah. try to fucking fence all that stuff. You know? They knew, they had it down to a science. They knew exactly what they were doing. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. So this whole thing, you know, fucking like a pirate ship, looks like a Spanish galleon, and they're trying to, and it's filled with cannons, and they're shooting cannons. No, that they didn't want that. Shooting cannons would sink the ship, that which was totally counterproductive. You wanted to steal the ship. A lot more dangerous. Yeah. A lot more dangerous. I mean, now they did, if they did capture a small ship that they were going to use for pirating purposes, then they would outfit it with more weapons yeah, and yeah, it didn't yeah. have any. Yeah. But in general, they tended to like smaller ships because, like I said, they were more yeah. maneuverable, they were faster. You could um, hide them in place if someone was out, like, looking for you. Yeah. They could outmaneuver, like, the bigger yeah. ships. And they didn't like cannons in the way that people think. If they, took, if they, if they, if they had cannon, they didn't like ball because ball would sink the enemy ship. 
they'd fill it full of shot, which was like buckshot. And that way you could kill people on the crew, enemy crewmen. You didn't want to sink the ship. The enemy, you know, you didn't want to sink the enemy ship. So they were turning cannon into things kind of like big old large bore shotguns. You know, you put a bunch of fucking lead shot in it. I hope I'm making sense to you people. I'm kind of drunk, but uh, my uh, God, and we're only like at that. Yeah, we're, we're so just he's starting. gonna be we're like just starting. Yeah, we're just starting. You're gonna be like right. ranting like Nicholas yeah, Cage not, and Vampire's Kiss by the end of this. It's not. It's <laughs> not like in a Disney movie where they're taking a Spanish galleon with a whole bunch of fucking cannon and putting fucking ball in the cannon and shooting it at the enemy ship. That was the last thing they wanted to do. Okay, because they did not want to sink that ship. It was more common to have small cannon on, up on the top of the sloop filled with shot, which is like little fucking lead beads so they could kill crewmen on the other ship. They didn't want to pu- punch a hole in the ship, you know? Yeah, it's like, we could use that. Yeah, they want that ship. They're, they're, they're thieves. They're not soldiers. They're trying to take everything they see. Yeah, that's basic. That's their whole like reason right. for existing. Right, yeah. Uh, Hugo said, "Do you have a link to the new channel?" I, you know, I don't at the moment, but I will uh, link it in the description. I should start doing that, like from now on. I keep forgetting. Like I have been linking the videos, like in the community tab of this channel, just until like I get people over there to subscribe to it. But you know, Mister Eighty Eight said, "You used to talk about Beijing, but I haven't heard her mentioned in a while. Just curious." Now Beijing's downstairs. She's yeah, right. she's still around. She just, uh, she doesn't come up here much. She's, she's yeah. like queen of the downstairs. Yeah. Um. So she doesn't come upstairs because Pookie will beat her up. Yeah, she's on she's on all kinds of uh, kidney therapy though. She's getting old. She's twelve years old. Twelve or thirteen. 12, yeah. 13 years old. So, had it, she's been throwing up. So, they, so she's got a bunch of kidney medicine to keep yeah. her going. Um, but we'll we'll see. I mean, I hope she's. She still seems like. Yeah. I still wake up in the middle of the night and hear her like crying to her little babies. She's gonna. She has a test she's got to do fucking in a couple weeks, and then once she gets done with that blood test, I'm gonna start giving her some of my testosterone. <laughs> I am, because she's losing too much weight. Yeah, she has been throwing up a lot. So I'm gonna put her on steroids. Try to get her to bulk up some. Yep, See, because when you help, have I don't know. when you have animals that have. And, you know, I got friends who are doctors and shit. When you start clipping the nuts off of cats or getting them, giving them hysterectomies and shit, they're not making them out of fucking hormones. They're, they're, their lifespan goes down by five, ten years uh, because they're not, producing, they're not producing the hormones that they need to fucking regulate body functions. So I'm going to give her some of my fucking H, HRT medicine. It only, it only a couple of couple cc's per month you know not a big deal or a couple I mean, she seems okay otherwise i mean she does throw up a lot but she's always throwing yeah. up a lot she's a, she's a steroid. puker that one she's yeah. always throwing up there's a, like a lot of food that doesn't agree with her so she always has to that's have, like, because special... she's weak she has special it's food. her it's, it's her kidneys and her liver and yeah stuff. she's had that for a while but yeah, yeah she's on medication for it but you can look at the average lifespans and animals that have been fixed do not live as long as animals that have not been fixed. And it's hormones. But, yeah, that's, you know. But, like I said, she doesn't, we don't see her much because we don't, I mean, we're mostly, like, upstairs. And she doesn't ever come upstairs because Pookie uh, is boss of upstairs. And Pookie will sit and guard. She yeah. sits on the ledge, like at the top of the staircase, and just sits there like a yeah. little, like a little vulture, <laughs> and like waits to see if Beijing is gonna try and come up there. I've been on some of these chat groups. These dudes fucking said my fucking dog. He's looking like shit. I saw him fucking. He's trying to lay down. It looks like his bones are hurting him. And I'm like, that motherfucker is his bulldog, his pit bull. It, it been fixed. So he started fucking banging that fucking pit bull up with his fucking testosterone. He was that, banging the pit bull. Bam! Banging him up with that fucking testosterone. And that fucking pit bull got jacked, starting to fight all the other fucking dogs and shit, and came back and lived another fucking ten years. Yeah. It works. It works, you know. Which is a normal dog's lifespan, but not a fixed dog, you know. Well, we'll see. I mean, I hope she's going to be okay. Yeah, we'll see. But after but, her test, I'm going to start giving her a test. Like I said, she is a little bit Test her, her Deanna Ball. Yeah. 
But yeah, she has been on medication for the last yeah. few weeks. When did we? When was she at the vet? Uh, two weeks, two ago? weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago. Yeah, she was at the vet two weeks ago because she was. Cranky. I don't want to tell a vet that I'm gonna be fucking getting. The, well, yeah, don't tell cranked, that. But I'm not ask. Cranked um, what? Why don't you ask uh, our our friend that's a vet? What? What he? Ask Doctor Michael. Well, he, Michael. Yeah, I'll ask him. He may not know, but yeah, you know. But I mean, he is a vet, so yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, we have a friend that's a vet that we met at Ivor. She's got to pick up weight, which that tells me fucking give her some. Give yeah, her, she has lost some weight. Yeah, she looks like she's she still two pounds. She still looks which is a lot fine, that but cat. that's because she's super fluffy. Yeah, but she lost two pounds, and that's a lot for a kitty. For yeah. a cat, so I'm I'm gonna get that cat fucking. What does the cat have to lose? Yeah. Get up. Put that cat on fucking steroids. <laughs> 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 yeah, I want my kid, I want my kitties to live forever. You're right. <laughs> well, I think that would make that cat live another four or five years. So I told Tom I had this I had the weirdest dream about Pookie the other night. I was carrying Pookie around like a baby, which I do sometimes anyway. And she could talk. The cat could talk. And the weird thing about the dream was that I wasn't amazed by the fact that she could talk. I was amazed by what she said. Yeah, she, she, she said. Me. Daddy has a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> the cat was talking about And I mean she mustache. was yeah, she was talking about you, but it's like obviously you don't have a mustache. You've no. never had a mustache. No. I don't know why like I don't know why Pookie said that, but I was just like, Wow, she's so smart. Like yeah. I wasn't like, Holy shit, she talked. Since I got sick I've been sleeping in the man cave on the ground and I'm fair game for the cat. And if Pookie <laughs> comes and fucks with me because I'm on the ground, it's fucking hilarious because I'm camping out on the ground. She's like, wait, hey, why are you on the ground? Hey, yeah, hey. yeah. <laughs> Might hit it's you funny. with my paws. She'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and she, her face is right next to me. Looking, are you awake? I says, yeah, I'm awake. <laughs> well, I'm awake she now. <laughs> She's cute as shit. Yeah. Though. All right, so yeah, we were talking about uh, yeah. ships. How pirates like smaller ships because for yeah. pra- for practical reasons. Yeah. They were practical people. It seemed like they just wanted shit that was gonna like help them steal shit. Yeah. Like. Thieves, faster. man, they're thieves. That's what I'm saying. That yeah. was kind of like their whole their whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so the first European uh, known to ex- have explored the coast of Florida, obviously, Juan Ponce de Leon, who was a Spanish explorer, also the governor of Puerto Rico at the time. And they think that um, he might have gone as far north as St. Augustine in 1513. The city wasn't founded until later, but they think that he did kind of go up there. Like you said, he was... One of the things was probably he was looking for the Fountain of Youth, and among other things. Now, he was the one that named the state La Florida. He thought it was an island, though, uh, because they didn't know. And he claimed it for the Spanish crown. Damn. Now, is that... Fucking thunder. Oh, yeah, storm. Well, like I said, why are you surprised? It's July in Florida. Yeah, we're in La Florida. We're in La Florida. Yeah. In the summer, it's like every day it storms. That's just pretty much, you just got to deal with it. Uh, so yeah. Now, prior to the founding of the city, which actually didn't happen until about 50 years later, um, there had been several attempts and incursions of other, uh, you know, European colonization. Uh, Spain had tried, France had tried, um, but they were ultimately failed because Florida, (laughs) it's a big fucking dense, humid, horrible swamp. So... And a lot of it, honestly, even back then, I mean, there were natives here, but um, a lot of the areas were uninhabited because, like I said, it was swampy and, you know, you couldn't really deal with it. It was, I think it was a bit cooler back then, but it was still, like, pretty miserable. So, yeah. So, basically, what happens? August of 1565, um, there's a fleet of Spanish ships that shows up on the coast of Florida. And because uh, the day that they arrived was the festival or the feast of St. Augustine, who was a philosopher and a bishop, um, they decided to name this city where they found it. Like, they eventually decided to call it St. Augustine. Now, 11 days after the ships came, like, to the coast, you had an admiral admiral named Pedro Menendez de Aviles, and he came on shore... And he called the place St. Augustine, or San Augustine, if you wanted, if you would rather. And there was actually a native village uh, nearby. 
So there was that. And if you go to St. Augustine nowadays, there's a bunch of stuff like named after uh, Pedro de Aviles, a lot of stuff. So St. Augustine, as I think I mentioned, because I think we did a show not too long after I came back from there, like Ghosts of St. Augustine. So I might have covered some of this then, but this is mostly pirate shit. So St. Augustine, if you don't know, is the oldest continuously occupied European settlement in the, you know, the 40, the contiguous United States. Um, Actually, second oldest continually inhabited city of European origin in United States territory. The first being San Juan, Puerto Rico, which was actually founded in 1521. St. Augustine was founded, as I mentioned, in 1565. Now, so when Admiral Pedro, I'm just going to call him Pedro because we're tight like that. So, uh, so he basically took this over for the crown, St. Augustine. This, he established the city. Now, the king says, okay, so establish a settlement there. Cool. Um, but also, along with him and his brother, whose name was Alvaro, they're the ones that sort of developed the convoy system that was sort of put in place to bring treasures from the New World Central America, South America, like other parts, you know, Mexico, things like that. Um, this was kind of like they established the sort of thing that was going to bring all the treasures. We're, we're like the way station, and then we're going to bring all the stuff from the New World, and we're going to send it on its way like back to Europe. We're looting the New World and sending it back to Europe. That's what we're doing. So he basically was the Captain General of Spain's treasure fleet. That's what he was put in charge to do. Um, and he was also the guy that put together a bunch of, uh, ships and stuff that were sort of, you know, would go and like, look for pirates because obviously they're like, look, we're going to have all of these big Spanish galleons and they're going to be going around the state just full of like gold and silver and all kind of like cool shit. So obviously like pirates are going to attack. So they had to have like some system in place, like to look out for that kind of stuff. He also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, was in charge of rooting out Protestants in the area, like including a settlement of French Huguenots that had taken up residence in Jacksonville. So there was that, a lot of those were slaughtered as well, but that's not really to do with pirate stuff. So I didn't really go too much into that. Now, because of St. Augustine's location and its geographical attributes, I guess. Um, it was a very, very attractive um, port, not only for legitimate businessmen, if you want to call it that, but also for pirates. Because the thing about it is that ships that were going, that were going to cross the Atlantic would all pretty much come by there. You know what I mean? If you were coming through the Gulf of Mexico with like your ship laden with shit from central of south america you had to come all the way around florida and you had to come up there just because of the trade winds and the you know all of that so you had to come up there uh to go across the atlantic to spain so pirates started figuring that out they're like oh my god like all the ships are coming by here so it's like a really good location for them to like station out and the thing about saint augustine too that's interesting is there's an island called anastasia island um and then there's an inlet behind it and this inlet was like a good place for pirates or whoever, like they could just kind of sit in there and wait and they could see ships passing, but the ships couldn't really see them because the island was sort of in the way. So it was a really ideal location for like ambush island for like pirate activity. And like I said, it still looks like that. You can still, if you go to St. Augustine today, it's like all kind of pirate shit and they'll tell you all the history about it. But uh, as I said, the Spanish, they weren't, dumb so they knew they were kind of wise to this whole thing so they actually built watchtowers on anastasia island and ended up posting sentries in them so you know they'd be able to like check out it was like hey we think there's maybe pirates and would send some word back in case something bad was going on now one of the first like big pirate incursions and i know that sir francis drake isn't usually called a pirate but he was a privateer so for everyone other than the English, he was absolutely a pirate, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Now, two decades after St. Augustine was founded, um, which was in 1565, so 1585, 1586, thereabouts, Sir Francis Drake has a fleet uh, of 25 ships and over 2,000 men. Now, Drake obviously famed sea captain 
uh, probably one of the most famous in European history, and also a privateer. He was working under the auspices of the English crown. Queen Elizabeth just loved the dude, and she actually sanctioned Drake's action. Um, what they would do, whatever country wanted you to be a pirate for them, they would give you this really cool, like, official piece of paper that was all had, like, all the pretty scroll and, like, the wax seals on it and everything like that. I meant the shit was real. Called a letter of mark. Yeah. So they'd give you that, and it basically says, government says it's A-OK yeah. to go raid, as long as you're raiding, like, enemy ships. Yeah. Like, don't raid any of our shit. Right. But, you know, so at that time, the English and the Spanish were deadly, deadly enemies. Yeah. So obviously, Drake, they're just like, yeah, go fuck the Spanish up. And the thing about it was that this was very attractive to a lot of governments, uh, you know, yeah. states at the time, because you were essentially, what they would do is like, they're saying, okay, I'll give you a letter of mark. You can go attack, like if it's an English one, you can go attack Spanish treasure ships and you take X percentage and then give the rest percentage to the crown. This fucks up the Spanish, which is their enemies. And you also get something out of it. And the English win, too, because they're like, well, we're fucking up our enemy and their supply lines and shit like that. Yeah. And we don't really have to, like, put a lot of money into, like, kidding out a whole entire navy because people, like, individually are doing it for their own gain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, look, don't think this is something that only happened in antiqu antiquity. It happened. It's probably happening now. But it was definitely happening in World War II. Germany had raiders, surface raiders, where you take a cargo ship and you arm it with cannons and then hide the cannons underneath things that would fall away. It, look, it would look like cargo boxes on the top of it. It's like a David Copperfield and magic boom, trick. There it is, it's guns. <laughs> and then they would fucking... Bitches a cannon. Yeah, and then they would fucking steal surface ships and raid their... And sink them, send them to the bottom or steal their cargo. So that went on even up until World War II. It's probably still going on, you know. But uh, under the auspices of fucking, well, we didn't do it. Because they would contract third parties to do it for you, you yeah. know. So this is still, probably still going on. But it happened verifiably up until the 40s. Yeah. So this isn't a fucking, the ways of the sea fucking live on. You know what I mean? It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're mostly talking about, like I said, we're not talking about, like, yeah, it happens in modern day, obviously. But yeah. we're talking about kind of like the golden age of piracy. This, and like yeah. I said, it was absolutely, yeah. like I said, everybody else, if you weren't English, right. uh, yeah, everybody else would consider you a pirate because you're just, right. like, taking over your, their ship and you're taking all their shit. Right. But he's like, hey... Uh, government says it's okay, and it's like, so if he goes back with all the stuff, they're not yeah. going to hang him like they right. would a pirate. They're going to be like, woohoo, thanks for bringing us all the stuff, and you fucked up our enemies. Like, good for you. Yeah. So, very, very common. But you needed that letter of mark to do it. So, if you didn't have that, if you did have that, you're a privateer. If you didn't have yeah. that, you're a pirate. Pirate. There's no difference. But, like, so there's really no difference. There's really no difference. I there's mean... No, whether or not you're a fuck... Who your clients are. That's yeah, all that That's... Yeah, essentially. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so Drake, what he was doing, um, he's planning to attack Spanish ports in the New World. He wanted to interrupt, like, all the, you know, kind of shipments of silver and gold that was going to King Philip III, I believe was the king at the time, or Felipe, if you prefer. Um, and at the same time, like I said, it was win-win because England and Spain were, you know, at, at loggerheads at war. So they were kind of like, okay, well, anything you can do to fuck up the Spanish, that's awesome. So Drake went, him and his men, they attacked, like, Santo Domingo. They did Cartagena. Um, and then started going back home. Now, they started, they wanted to attack Havana in Cuba. Um, but they couldn't really get their shit together there. So what they decided to do, well, we need to, like, plunder somewhere else. Come on, where can we go? So he starts sailing north along Florida's Atlantic coast, looking for some Spanish-owned targets, because Florida was owned by the Spanish at that point. So he's like, well, I'm going to need to look for somewhere that I can fuck up. So in May of 1586, they come up on the Florida, like, uh, the Atlantic coast, and they see a little fort and an inlet. Now, this turns out to be St. Augustine. 
which at the time was the most northern town in Spain's empire in the New World. Drake had heard of this settlement, and he was aware that the guy that ran it, uh, Admiral Pedro, um, he was the guy that had ordered all the French Huguenots massacred. Uh, that was another thing that pissed Drake off because, you know, like I said, the whole England-Spain thing was also like a Protestant Catholic thing. So there was like a lot of religion going on there as well. So Drake is like, oh, yeah, the guy that uh, that runs this settlement is the same guy that wiped out all those Huguenots. Hence why that place is called Matanzas. So he's like, so this is going to be like a win-win. I can loot the city and I can get revenge on a dude that wiped out a bunch of Protestants. So... He says, this is going to be our next target. So the English pretty much uh, started attacking what was then like this little wooden fort. And it was just up in the sand dunes. Now, there were a few Spanish, uh, you know, officers or whatever, and they were on duty. But they just shot a couple things and they're just like, okay, fuck this. This is way above our pay grade. So they fucking took off because it was just like a whole. I mean, like I said, it was Drake and he had like a fucking whole bunch of men. So Drake sends in a landing party, and then they rode into the inlet. They didn't see any other Spaniards because the ones had taken off. But they did find this French Huguenot who had actually been taken prisoner by the Spanish, and he'd been in, you know, he'd been held captive by them for like six years and was not happy about it. So he said, tell you what, um, I'll, I'll show you like where the main settlement is. So they did find this guy. Now, at this point, like uh, Admiral Pedro, who was the guy that was the governor of St. Augustine at the time, uh, he got warned, hey, Drake is coming in. And he looks at his little garrison or whatever there, and he's like, dude, I only have, like, 100 men, and they have, like, 2,000 men, so I'm kind of hosed. So he's like, okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to go inland a little bit and then let them kind of come in, and then when they come in, then we'll maybe do surprise attacks on them later on because there's, like, there's no way they could face them head-to-head -head because they were way outnumbered. So Drake and his guys like come in around this little fort um, and they seem to like be okay. They're like, oh, okay, well, nobody's here. We're just going to take the shit. But then during the night, um, some allies of the Spanish who were actually natives of the area, like native, like American Indians, uh, came in and attacked them. Now, Drake uh, and his guys managed to like hold their position and uh, the Indians eventually said, okay, fuck this. It's not worth it. And they took off too. Now, the following day, uh, Drake and about 200 of his guys come up the inlet, and they soon come across this, uh, the Fort of San Juan, which at the time was uh, like a stockade just made of logs uh, that was built by the Spanish. Now, the Spanish did shoot at them, uh, but the English landed and basically just took the fort without too much trouble, because like I said, the Spanish were way outnumbered. Now, and a lot of them had just run away because they knew they were outnumbered, and they were like, yeah, fuck this. Now, when they came in, though, they did find uh, a gun platform that had 14 bronze artillery pieces on it. We're like, ooh -hoo. well, here's something we could take. If, they also found what? If we lose connection, we'll try to be up back on as soon as possible because there's a bunch of lightning happening outside. Yeah, Just I mean, yeah, that. we'll see. Yeah, it is storming in case yeah. you can't hear it. Right. But like I said, Florida, y'all. Uh, so, yeah, so they did find... Um, the gun platforms, so they were like, okay, we can take all that stuff. They also found this big chest, which had, like, the payroll in it. Uh, about 2,000 gold ducats. Not sure how much that is in today's money. But, obviously, they had left it behind because they were, like, in a hurry. So, they're like, okay, we're having that, too. So, Drake and the guys took pretty much everything that was left. Uh, you know, the guns, the money, everything. And then burned the fort uh, to ashes. And after that, the English came upon the main settlement of St. Augustine. Because before this, this was just the, the little fort that was outside of it. Um, and they come into the town, uh, which was not a huge town at that time. It was just like a little settlement. And they come in and there's nobody there. Because like I said, the Spanish had retreated to like, a, you know, kind of a hiding position. So they could sort of ambush them later on. So Drake and the guys like come in there. And uh, they're like, huh, there's nobody here. But then, like, the Spanish actually started, like, firing at them from, like, their hidden positions. One of the English officers named Anthony Powell was killed. 
Uh, the English men then charged all the way to the outskirts of the town, uh, you know, kind of into the outskirts, and then they, the Spanish eventually retreated. It's like that they were outnumbered. And Drake was like, okay, well, I run this shit now. Now, the English stayed in the town overnight, and then the following day, they actually, like, fucked up St. Augustine's, like, burned it to the ground. They burned all the buildings to the ground. They burned all the crops. They just fucked everything up. Everything that was worth anything, money, guns, anything like that, they took it. Um, if it wasn't worth anything, they destroyed it. I mean, they just fucking raised it. There was nothing left. Um, the Fort of San Juan was burned, and they just took all the guns and shit like that. Um, so basically, the thing about it that's interesting is from an American history standpoint is that Drake was actually, his next stop was going to be at the colony of Roanoke. So he's like, hey, if we find anything here that the settlers at Roanoke can use, pick that up too, and we'll take it to them because that's the next stop we're going to make. So that's what he told his guys. Um, so they actually got like a whole bunch of the cannons and shit like that. Uh, so as I said, they just fucking torched everything. They destroyed everything and then sailed on to Roanoke. Now, once the English had taken off, uh, Admiral Pedro, Admiral Pedro comes out um and they're like uh they come out and there's like nothing left saint augustine is just fucking there's nothing there everything's just been like burned or taken or whatever so he goes to uh the viceroy of cuba and gets some money from them like supplies and stuff and they eventually like build the settlement back up they replaced uh the san juan fort with another wooden fort and interestingly if you see if you saw like um I don't remember if I posted pictures of the fort that's in San Augustine now, which is called Castillo de San Marcos. That wasn't there at the time. That's made of like coquina. It's masonry and it's made of like coquina rock and stuff like that. It's massive. Um, that wasn't there at the time. All the forts there were wooden. Um, it was actually another pirate attack that caused them to build that, which I'll get into in a little bit. But see, that wasn't actually built until 1672. So at this point, there was just, they kept putting up wooden ones. So, uh, yeah, so Drake's raid, which I think was just called the Raid on St. Augustine. It has its own Wikipedia page and everything because it was, like, pretty significant in Florida history and in American history in general. Um, there was kind of, like, it was pretty significant from a Spanish point of view because there were, like, rumors that the English had a settlement that was, like, farther north and were using that um, as, like, a piracy base at some point. And some Spanish prisoners that had been captured by the English and released uh, confirmed that. They're like, yeah, they, he's going up and, like, replenishing the colony at Roanoke, which we did a show about that. Like, all those motherfuckers disappeared. But, yeah. So it's, they went engine. Well, yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying that during this time period, Drake, th when he did the raid on St. Augustine, he was yeah. actually on his way up to Roanoke. Yeah. And some of the shit that he stole from St. Augustine, he was taking up there to them, to, like, to the settlers. So I thought that was, like, kind of interesting. Um... But yeah, so there's there was a thing afterward, like after that whole thing happened, like Admiral, Admiral, why do I want to say admirable? I keep wanting to say admirable instead of admiral. It's, it's just, the it's just like, I yeah. just want to add that extra syllable. I don't know why that's so attractive to me, but my mouth is not like behaving. Yeah. And I'm not even, it's like, I haven't even started my second drink, so I don't even know. I'm not that drunk. But yeah, so admiral. Pedro. Maybe I'll just call him Pedro. Then I don't have to worry about it anymore. What's up, Pedro? He's dead. He doesn't care. Um, so, yeah. So, he basically, like, goes to the king and everything like that. He's like, you know, I think... Because they... The Spanish also had some uh, settlements, like, in South Carolina and stuff. He's like, I think that we should kind of concentrate everything in one place and that place should be St. Augustine and so he kind of like argued about it and then finally they they kind of like argued with him a little bit but then they were like, okay, fine. So he kind of like put everything down there. They rebuilt it. It was fine. Now, St. Augustine was also attacked by another notable buccaneer, not a privateer this time, an actual pirate, uh, by the name of Robert Searle. Sometimes Searles, I've seen it both, like, with an S at the end. Um, you know, it's one of those things where back in the old days they didn't have, like, names, I guess, or, like, names that were, like, nor they were, like, normalized in spelling or whatever. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier... No the, spelling was normalized back That's then. what I'm saying. It's just yeah. kind of like, they were just like, whatever, whatever yeah. we feel like on the day. I, today, I feel they like putting an rules. S on the end. Yeah. Today, I feel like spelling it this way. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the... And I don't, I'm sure other languages are the same, but English, in particular, 
Uh, standardized. They didn't standardize the spelling until quite recently. Yeah, like 1800s. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the 1800s. Like before that, it's like they kind of had a few. You know, as long as you as long as you got your point it across. It was phonetic. Yeah. Basically. But they didn't really have standardized spellings yeah. or anything like that, really. But as I mentioned earlier, the term buccaneer, uh, which was generally, it was just like a general term that meant any of the pirates that operated in the Caribbean, uh, specifically, yeah. during the golden age, golden age of piracy. Uh, the term buccaneer, as I mentioned, comes from the Arawak word uh, bucan, which is the, the thing that they, yeah. you know, that they Smoker. smoked the meat on. Um, you know, so the French colonists uh, started calling it uh, bucanier, Bucanier. I guess, uh, referring to uh, the people who, you know, on Hispaniola, which is now, uh, that's now Haiti, right? Or the Dominican Uh, Republic. Yeah, somebody. Um, And Tortuga. And those guys, like, attacked Spanish ships when they came by. So the the term became interchangeable with, like, pirate. Because, you know, hey, those guys smoke meat, and then they also attack ships when they come by. So Those dudes pi- you see smoking meat it's on the pirate. beach, it's them. Yeah. Those are the ones that are... I serious. mean, that's basically where the word came from, because they associated the guys that smoked meat, mm-hmm. the Europeans that smoked meat, yeah. with the Europeans that also attacked treasure ships that were yeah. coming through there. So it was like a pirate word. Yeah, I think they were mostly smoking fish. Yeah. Or whatever, I guess yeah. whatever meat. Well, it's like I said, I said the Arawak Indians were probably yeah. smoking other kinds of meats. They but were I on think the it was beach, probably like, yeah, and They were on true. the beach, which makes me think that they were netting. Probably. So it was probably fish. Yeah. So, yeah. So this, we're jumping ahead like a century because this is about 100 years. Well, I think it's more like 80 years. I think it was like 80 years after Drake attacked St. Augustine. Uh, you have the other pirate, Robert Searle, who sometimes uh, used the alias John Davis. Now, his home base was Jamaica. Now, they don't really know too much about his early life, much like most pirates. Uh, you didn't really hear about them unless they got caught or unless uh you know they attacked a ship and it was in like the navy logs or something like that you know what i mean yeah. so they didn't really know like what these people were doing when they were younger uh the first mention of him in the historical record is actually there was a expedition in cuba that he was like a part of so in 1668 uh searle and his men they were sailing off the coast of cuba and they captured a spanish frigate uh, which was bound for Veracruz, and another ship that was on the way to Havana, Cuba. Now, on board this particular ship was a French surgeon, uh, the first ship, actually, the the one that was going to Veracruz. There was a French surgeon, and his name was Pedro Piquez. Piquez, I think is how you pronounce that. Now, this guy, um, they're not entirely sure. They think he got punished by... Uh, good old Admiral Pedro and they're not sure if it's because he was kind of like a narc and he had like told some pirates like about the location of St. Augustine or kind of clued them into like where the shit was but he pretty much exiled him from St. Augustine so he was on this particular ship like when the pirates took it so uh, Searle he was like um Okay, well, this guy, they think, this guy's here, and he knows a lot about St. Augustine because he used to live there, so we're going to make that our next target of attack. So they don't know if he told them some shit about the city. He probably did, but that's probably why. They decided they were going to attack that city next. Uh, And they think, too, that he might have told them that the treasury of St. Augustine had a whole bunch of, like, silver bars in there, which they had got from his shipwreck. So Searle... Uh, he had another, he had his ship and then he had another pirate ship. But then like the two Spanish ships that he captured, he took those as well. And he's like, Ooh, I can use these for subterfuge purposes. So what they did was they sailed up towards St. Augustine. Now the two pirate ships kind of kept on the DL, right? But the other two ships they let those kind of go out ahead because those were like legit looking ships, right? Mm-hmm. So they're doing like a whole little, yeah, like I said, they're doing a whole little fucking Trojan horse kind of situation. So May 1668, the two legitimate looking ships come within hailing distance of the fort in St. Augustine. And uh, so the pirates are like hiding out. 
Now, the pilot, the harbor pilot comes out like he normally would. And he's like, well, where are these ships from? What do you got on there? Like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, yeah, we're from Mexico and we have a bunch of supplies that we were supposed to bring here. So the harbor pilot's like, okay, sounds legit. Um, And the pilot's men, what they did was they had a signal where they'd fire two shots into the air like, hey, everything's okay. You know, don't don't start shooting at people. (laughs) And uh, so, yeah. So everybody's like, okay, cool. It's two ships that have come in, like, bringing us stuff. Now, the pilot and his men get on board these two Spanish vessels that the pirates had stolen. Now, for whatever reason, the pilot in this situation would normally bring the ships into the harbor, but they don't really know why, but they stayed out where they were, like, anchored out where they had, you know, where they had dropped their anchors. They just left them out there. Uh, nobody seemed suspicious. Nobody thought that there was, like, pirates in the wings or anything like that. So, like, oh, everything's fine. So, everybody just, the day went on and everybody just went to bed, like normal. Around, uh, middle of the night, (laughs) when it got dark, Searle and his men, the other pirates, they took their little pirate ships and went around the guns and into the harbor. And, uh... They would have snuck in without completely being seen if one motherfucker hadn't been out there fishing. He was there was a guy named Corporal Miguel de Monzon. De Monzon. De Monzon. Yeah. And he was out fishing in the middle of the fucking night yeah. like a weirdo. Yeah. And he saw the fucking well, the pirates. Fishing's good at night. I know. Fishing's good at night. He was he the did, only motherfucker did. that was out there. Everybody else was asleep. And yeah. the pirates are probably like, God damn it. Yeah. One dude. One dude. Yeah, he's trying to catch the fish. <laughs> he was just out there. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the guy saw him. Uh, he actually heard them first. He heard, like, the oars. And he was just like, yeah. what the fuck is that? They're not supposed to be here. Uh, so he's like, so he starts paddling real quick. Like he was in a little boat, like toward the land. Right. Um, so the pirates chased him and they shot at him and, uh, they did hit him. Like they didn't kill him or nothing like that, but they wounded him. Right. But he actually like got like a G he got like off the boat and he ran to the garrison and woke everybody up, said fucking pirates, pirates. So, uh, it didn't really help him though. Gotta say, because the pirates were already there and everybody was just like waking up and like, what pirates? It must've been like that. Uh, so they didn't really have a lot, you know, they didn't really have a a lot of warning. They're all in their jammies and whatnot. So most of them got killed, uh, or captured because the pirates pretty much just came right on land and just fucking went ham. They just went all over the fucking place, swarming the place, uh, went through all the government buildings, the church, everything. They just took everything. Uh, and if they couldn't take it, then they destroyed it. They burned it. Uh, now, the pirates ended up losing 11 men in the raid. Uh, 19 were injured. Now, the people that were living in St. Augustine at the time, uh, some of them did survive because they ran to the fort, which actually didn't fall, um, or they ran out into the forest. Uh, but about a quarter of the population of the town at the time, which uh, was about 60 Spaniards, uh, died in the attack. Now, the pirates... Uh, Searle and the pirates did take 70 uh, children and adults as hostages. And these he later exchanged for various provisions, including firewood and other things. Uh, He didn't free any of the uh, blacks or Indians that he took. Um, He's like, his letter, he had a letter of, that's the thing. I guess he technically is a privateer because he had a letter of Mark from the governor of Jamaica. But okay. see, most European crowns would not honor that. Yeah. So they'd be like, what? That's, no, not, a, fuck that's not a real country. Yeah, what are you talking junior. about? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But he did technically have a thing. And he said that his letter of Mark, um, hey, I'm allowed to sell anybody that's not a Spaniard. Right. So he's like, I'm going to keep all these motherfuckers. <laughs> right. So yeah. don't get, as democratic as the pirates might have been in some ways... They absolutely would sell your ass into sleep. Oh, yeah. They did Well, they, they, they voted didn't. on it. That's what I They mean. voted on that yeah. shit. Yeah. So don't get... I mean, and I'm not saying... <laughs> because the thing about it, there were um, there were a lot of black pirates. Yeah. A lot. Because yeah. a lot of them were freed slaves, and they're like, yeah. fuck this shit. I'm well, going to go like, be a pirate. they would sell a motherfucker, too. Yeah. It well, was, that's what I'm yeah, saying. They, they would do, they would pretty much do anything that made them... Anything yeah. that was a commodity, yeah. then they would sell it. Right. 
I mean, they it didn't really. Raci- it wasn't racial. No, they didn't really give uh, a shit about you. White people fucking would sell white people. Black people would sell white people. Well, and some of the people that went into piracy too, and yeah. some of the people that were sold yeah. into slavery were indentured servants, and a lot of those right. were, uh, and particularly a little bit right. later, were Irish. Yeah. Because a lot of people would like, well, a lot of Irish would sell themselves into indentured yeah. servitude for like Irish, seven years or something like that. There were Irish slaves. There were. There was, so you yeah. Know, pe- uh, people do not understand history. Okay, fucking. These modern motherfuckers going through these universities, they're not telling the story straight. Slavery didn't have a whole lot to do with race. It had to do with whether or not you were vulnerable. Okay? If you were in an area that did not have a nation state protecting you and your interests, you could be fucking shanghaied or fucking ca- or captured and sold as a slave. It didn't matter fucking what color you were. It was just that no one no one protected you. You weren't part of a nation. And uh, fucking, <laughs> and even if even if you were in a fucking nation state, you could still get Shanghai. People didn't follow rules. Uh, we some people were like, well, what the fuck does Shanghai mean? There was a phenomenon that would happen. Usually, if you were a white sailor, you could be in a bar somewhere drinking, and then. Wake up and be in a fucking ship's hold. Yeah, you'd be on a ship Bound to China. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck am I doing here? You've been shanghai You're going to Shanghai. Okay. You're going to fucking serve on this ship, you know, and you're, you're being sold as a slave. Now, would you get out of it? Yeah, you probably would. But it would take years. You know. World was a dangerous place. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I would not want to. It's like the world, world was a dangerous sucked place back then, man. Yeah, I mean, at least now most people, at least in the Western world, like yeah. have some concept of like a little bit of control over your own life and shit no. like that. I mean, you're not gonna be drinking in a bar and somebody's like gonna. I mean, probably 99 percent of the time, yeah. someone's not gonna kidnap you and like, hey, you're in the navy now. You're in the navy now. You're gonna be <laughs> Wait, what the hell? We're gonna the take you to a country you've never been to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you work here now. We're gonna put you in indentured servitude. Yeah. I mean, that very, very rarely happens. Yeah. I'm sure it happens in other parts of the world still, but it doesn't usually happen here. One of the reasons why it doesn't happen as much as it did is because we don't live in a world where the economy is labor-driven. We have an excess of people. So you you don't really need people like you used to. They've been replaced by robotics. So you don't have to shanghai people. Like well, now people get shanghaied for like fucking Different sex, reasons. sex, sex slavery. trade. Yeah. You're right. Like sex trafficking. trade is the is how you get sanction, shanghai. Because that right. absolutely does happen yeah. in the United States yeah. still. You cannot replace, you cannot replace that pussy with a robot yet. Okay, but eventually they will, and then even even a human woman won't be worth anything once those fucking. In robots a way, are that's kind of good though, because yeah. I'm like, well. That could be fucking At least bad. people... Well, I don't know. It's I'm sure it'll too. have downsides, but... Yeah. I'm like, if they're not, like, kidnapping... Look, it's right. like, if you're some weirdo that's into, like, some freaky shit, and right. there's, like, an AI, like, cyborg that is close enough to a real thing that you don't have to, like, kidnap a real person... Yeah. ...to do that, then good. You well, know? there's always gonna be fetishists that that's have to I'm have saying. a fucking real woman, Okay. <laughs> But, but that's the thing; it'll be it'll become a fetish. So yeah, it'll be like a lot yeah. less like prevalent. A lot less maybe. prevalent. The, uh, fucking from what I've been hearing lately, AI is good enough for a sex bot. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, for most people. I'm right. sure it probably yeah. is at this stage. And they can make those bodies. It's only a matter of time before they start selling those things. Who knows what that will do to the reproductive cycle? Because a lot of these motherfuckers, a lot of these incels get married so they can have sex and that's where people come from but the thing about it though is that incels yeah by their definition don't get laid i I just i I use that as a generalization they don't get laid so it's like and look if if we can give incels sex bots so they'll shut up and leave the rest of us alone and like stop shooting up places and whatnot like they're want to do then good that's a win you just have that sex spot and just stay over there away from normal people. How about that? 
You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I think it's a win. I think it's a win for humanity as a whole. I'm not saying that it doesn't have like some downsides. Everything does. But I think in general, it will probably be, it will probably be a win. So yeah, so Searle and the other pirates, um, like I said, they, they kept a lot of the people because they're like, hey, we can sell these as slaves. Don't like take these away. They also got away, here's what they got away with. 133 silver marks. I don't think that was a huge amount of money, but that was what they had. Um, a whole bunch of canvas that they could use to like make sales with. A whole bunch of candles, which doesn't sound like much, but it was probably like a big deal back then, like before electricity, like woo, candles. Um, they got like all the stuff from the church. They had a whole bunch of like jewels and just, just silver and regular shit like that. So they hung out in the city for about uh, for about a day, 20 hours, something like that, and then they took off. Now, what ended up happening, his attack on St. Augustine was, again, a really big deal. This was like the second big pirate invasion in within a century. Uh, as I said, Sir Francis Drake's one, it was destroyed. I mean, there was nothing left of the place. And they had, like, rebuilt it over the subsequent 80, 90 years. And here comes this motherfucker and, like, fucks it all up again. Um, so basically, they took most of the food supplies um, for the people that were living there. Uh, they took uh, all the ships, pretty much, um, that, you know, the residents of the town, like, needed. So, basically, it was kind of like, there was something, too, that, and this is kind of, like, leading up to why the Coquina Fort that's still there today uh, was built, was that a lot of people in the town, they thought they saw, like, some of the captives and shit like that, thought they had seen some of the pirates taking soundings in the harbor and they said oh well they're planning another attack they're gonna come back later on and take like all the shit they didn't take this time or you know they're planning to take it back when when they build it up again so you know and it was also kind of suspicious that the pirates hadn't burned the whole fucking shit down like drake did so they're like they're gonna come back like later on after we built up a little bit because it's such a vulnerable area i mean it's it's a it's a very um, tempting target, I guess, like St. Augustine was at the time. So because of that, because they suspected that there were going to be more pirate attacks, um, they figured, well, we need like a way bigger, more impenetrable fort. So four years after uh, Searle's attack, they started building um, Castillo de San Marcos, which is still there today. It's a massive, massive uh, masonry fort uh, made of coquina and uh, still stands there to this day. And uh, as far as I know, after they built that fort, pirates are just kind of like, mm, no, too much trouble. Because if you see the place, you'll know why. <laughs> it's like a massive, massive structure. And it's just like, and honestly, there's never, even nowadays, you can go there and see it. And they're still kind of like cannonballs, like embedded in the walls. Like, because they'd shoot a cannon at it, it would just go dunk, and it would just stick in the wall, and it would just stay there. So they couldn't really, like, get through it. It's just, like, really, really thick, like, coquina walls. So it's pretty much impenetrable, and once they built that, uh, the pirates didn't really fuck with them too much anymore. Now, uh, so over the years, as I mentioned, Florida, it's a really big... If you go anywhere, like St. Augustine or any kind of... Or Tampa or anywhere like that, and you go in a gift shop, they're going to try and sell you, like, some fucking treasure maps, man, because the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico are littered with wrecks uh and that's not that's not imagination they found like a bunch of pirate wrecks they found like a bunch of, and there's a bunch that they haven't found too because you have to think not only was this a major major uh shipping lane for all of the treasure uh galleons that were going from central south america back to spain uh also it's florida and we have hurricanes so pretty much when they were sailing in the summertime, that's like prime hurricane season, and a lot, a lot, a lot of ships, and sometimes like a whole battalion of ships would go down in a hurricane, and sometimes they haven't been found. So Florida has kind of like a little bit of a, I mean, you have like, somebody mentioned Mel Fisher earlier. Um, they have, like, a whole kind of, like, little subculture of treasure hunters, like, people that go out on boats and, like, try to find. And there's still, like, tons of shit out there to find. And I'm not saying there's not, because there's a bunch of it. 
Uh, so the biggest disaster is probably like the fleet of 1622. There was a big one in 1715. There was a big one in 1733. In 1622, actually, there were eight ships and they were coming into the Florida Straits and they were lost in a hurricane. So that's like eight ships at the bottom of the thing. Um, they found uh, some of these lost ships, as I mentioned, uh, the Nuestra Senora de Atocha from the 1622 fleet. They found that. Uh, the Urca de Lima from the 1715 fleet and the San Pedro from the 1733 fleet. So they have found some of the ships, but so many of them went down and they've been like scattered uh, over the ocean floor and or the Gulf floor since then. So there's still like a bunch of shit out there to be found, which like I said, that's why there's a lot of fucking treasure hunters. So the 1715 one, um, it was July of 1715 and there were 11 vessels. I think there were 12 and one got away, but 11 vessels from this, what they called the 1715 treasure fleet, uh, they were heading out from Havana and they actually, it was a hurricane again, and it wrecked uh, near Cape Canaveral, which is on the East Coast. <laughs> Cape Canaveral, obviously that's where the, um, all the space shuttles go off from. And that's about, that's probably about 50, 60 miles south from where I grew up. Cause I grew up in Daytona Beach. And we used to drive down to Cape Canaveral to see the shuttles go off, and it was about an hour, hour and 15 minute drive. I think it's about 50 miles, if I'm not mistaken. This is about 50 miles south of where I grew up. Um, now, interestingly, because this particular uh, event, all the ships going down uh, in 1715 in the hurricane, the distress call uh, got to Jamaica in November of 1715, and there was another pirate there whose little ears perked right up. Hey, with all those fucking ships that just went down, I'm gonna go check that out. His name was Henry Jennings. Also a pirate. Also, I think he kind of also had the imprimatur of the English crown. So I guess he's technically a privateer, but like I said, same kind of thing. Now he had a ship called the Bersheba. So he heard about all these Spanish ships going down and goes cha-ching and starts sailing out for the Florida coast. Now, he also had a, um, he had that letter of Mark too from the Jamaican government. <clears throat> His letter said that he was able to, and this is a quote, execute all manner of acts of hostility against pirates, according to the law of arms, with explicit instructions not to attack anyone except pirates, which seems like a pretty vague thing to like say. You know what I'm saying? Attack anyone except pirates. Yeah. Well, no, it, you can attack anybody only pirates. Yeah, you can attack only pirates. Okay. It was like, but hey, they look like pirates to me. Okay. <laughs> they had parrots on their shoulders and their wooden legs and everything. So I just I thought they were pirates. I don't know. So he could probably like get away with it. You could probably you you could probably recognize them back then. Yeah. Like I said, I was reading that book Under the Black Flag and he was talking about like the way that pirates are dressed like in movies and stuff. Yeah. And he's like that's actually fairly accurate. He's like even the captains with like the the big wigs and like the hats and the crazy like they're like that's not too far off because some of them were pretty pimping because yeah. they would steal like a bunch of expensive shit like silks and everything like that from other ships and be like ooh this is nice I'm gonna yeah. wear this shit so they do there are some like trial records of pirates that got caught and like the pirates would come to trial and they'd be like fucking they'd Dread be looking all fly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. some of them did. not all of them obviously but your pirates like on the regular ships. Yeah, they just basically wore, yeah, they did wear those things on their heads, like, you know, handkerchief type stuff on their heads. They all had all, they were all like tons and tons of pistols and cutlasses and stuff yeah. like that, like around their belt. But, and they would wear like the breeches. So yeah, they're like, that's yeah. pretty accurate. Okay, let me say something about pistols. Back in the day, in this era, the quintessential pistol was the matchlock. It should be a flintlock, really. Matchlocks were a little expensive but the flintlock and it was a mechanical percussion pistol with a flint and a frizzing pan and all that but the reloading time was a lot long it took it took a long time to reload that the average pirate carried six six pistols at least they did they had a bunch they had a bunch of because you there was no time to reload well, and plus, so, if you were at sea, like, your shit yeah. might get wet, and so you didn't know if, yeah. like, some of the shit was, like, not gonna They had them all discharge. tucked into belts, and they were all tied together on lanyards. Okay. 
So it's just, which made sense. You wanted them tied together. That <coughs> way you could just drop one <coughs> and go to a next one. You didn't have to worry about reholstering. So towards the end of a motherfucker's combat run, he'd have a bunch of pistols swinging <laughs> on the end of fucking lanyards. You know, ropes. Yeah, they had like ropes that they kept him on. Yeah. They have found those like in uh, yeah. in wrecks and stuff. Right. You also uh, at sea, you want everything in, in general to be tied to you. They <coughs> you can't fall overboard. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. Because you wouldn't want to be like, hey, I'm gonna shoot you. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're boarding. You're jumping from one one ship to the next, and you don't want to drop anything, and then it goes into the sea. So it's got to be tied to you. And uh, you also, like I said, you don't want to reholster or rebelt something. You just boom, you shoot, you just drop it, go yeah. for the next one. It's like I'll get that. They're hanging later. and swinging, banging on your knees and shit. But that's just the way it was. We kind of did the same thing in the army with magazines. Somebody like what? Yeah, we had to fucking keep all our M16 magazines. You had to keep track of them. We had them all taped and tied on the bottom, and then the fucking 550 cord that went to the bottom of your magazine pouch. So when you dumped a fucking M16 mag, you just threw it, and it would just be hanging on a line, and you grab another one. Because you don't care that that shit's fucking banging around, you're crawling and stuff, you know. After the action, after combat, you'd put all that shit back together. But uh, it's not like it is in the movies. It's not as glamorous. There's shit fucking... Fucking well, nothing's ever as glamorous yeah. as it looks in the movies. It's yeah. easy for like shit to look glamorous in the movies, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like we're only filming like five minutes after we spent like yeah. five hours get, setting all this shit up. <laughs> yeah. Because then, the army's ability to reissue you a fucking magazine is no. They they, they might be able to reissue you fucking am, ammo, but not magazines. So fucking, you're gonna tie that to you, and it's gonna be fucking. 550 cord going down to the bottom of your fucking magazine pouch. Yeah, they had like, it's, uh, yeah, I was reading something about that just uh, mm -hmm. last night where it's like, yeah, they had like slings. Everything Ooh. was like tied to them with mm -hmm. like slings. Yeah, and, then, and that's, they learned to do that. All armies learn to do that by experience. It's not something you learn out of a book. You have to protect the shit that you have because you, there won't be a replacement, you know. Yeah, it's not like not you, can, a pinch. you can go to the Walgreens right, and get right. a new one. Right. Camp Guy said, they still find gold coins on the beach at Sebastian Inlet. Yeah, that's right. Actually, all of those kind of like those island inlets and stuff like that, There's all they're always finding like shit there. And they also said they're still looking for about half of the Atocha stuff. Yeah, they are. Uh, one of the most famous... Oh, this is funny because I just saw a documentary about this earlier today. One of the most famous treasure finds in history was by a first time 17-year-old kid that found a 12-foot-long gold chain and a two and a half inch Chinese gold toothpick charm. He just found it out of the sand. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I saw I saw that. I was watching a documentary today about piracy and they showed that. It's like this big, and I was like, who the fuck? <laughs> Rich people have entirely too much money, obviously. Because back in the day, it's like, hey, I want this big fucking <laughs> pimpin' ass this big pimpin' ass Flava Flav chain Flav with it that has like this what I couldn't figure out like it's some kind of animal was it some kind of animal like I couldn't it? figure out what it was is but it? it was like and they said it was like a toothpick it's like a yeah. gold toothpick yeah. on this big fucking gold yeah, chain you were just teeth you know? yeah 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 I'm like alright well they probably didn't have toothbrush well I they know that but oh, man they probably did that at the dinner table too yeah. Uncouth motherfuckers. Trying to pull that plaque off their teeth. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fucking gross. I don't know. But yeah, I saw that. I saw what you're talking about. I couldn't figure... Yeah, it was like some kind of... It looked like a... I don't know. It looked like a panther? I don't know what it, remember, like, what it looked like, but yeah. It was something badass. I guess. Yeah. But it's a toothpick. Yeah. Because probably like if you saw it, you'd be like, ooh, badass. It's like a spike. And they're like, yeah, they just used it to like yeah, yeah. their teeth. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god oh it's a fish okay i couldn't tell exactly what it was, it was. A fish. Yeah. well i was just kind of like looking at because i was writing something over here and like kind of watching it with like half my attention they probably would have begged to give her that's not a fish it's a whale or some shit like that <laughs> it's a shark it's a shark yeah it's something badass it's well something like you badass. said if it's just something like yeah it's like some five-year-old boy shit i want a toothpick that looks like a shark yeah but made of solid gold yeah with a big solid gold 
chain so I can yeah. hang it around my neck and pick my teeth at the dinner table. All all of old fashioned <laughs> history is like it was written by fifteen year old boys. It's true. It is. I mean, yeah. especially <laughs> anything having to do with the new world. It's like children wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were kind of children. <laughs> I mean, they didn't live long. They didn't live long. Yeah, they didn't really have a chance to, like... It was all fun. Get old and, like, reflect on their... (laughs) Man, I was stupid back then. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. So, so yeah. Where was I? Okay, so Henry Jennings, like I said, he (laughs) hears about all of these ships going down in a hurricane with all this stuff on it. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go check that out. So he gets to Florida in early 1716. Now, by the time he got there... um, Now, the Spanish weren't slouches i mean sometimes when their ships went down in hurricanes they did actually have recovery crews like they had diving bells and shit like that like they could go recover some of it you know what i mean so by the time that the pirate uh henry jennings got there most of the treasure had been recovered uh by the spanish and they took it back to havana so uh (laughs) what jennings did though this is this is easy piracy (laughs) But he found out that some of the stuff that they had recovered, they had had it all packed up and they were going to, like, send it, uh, you know, to wherever it needed to go. But it was just in this fort that didn't really have that many guards uh, at this place called Palma de Eyes, which they think is maybe close to modern-day Vero Beach. And so he's like, well, shit, it's just sitting here. Like, no, but I'm just going to take it. Yeah. So that's pretty much, like, like I said, easy piracy. He didn't have to, like, take a ship or nothing. It was just sitting there. So he's like, well, I'm going to take that shit. So technically, that was his first act of piracy, was just taking stuff that was laying there, like, that was very lightly guarded. So uh, he actually had three ships at this point and about 300 dudes. So they basically ambushed the camp and took all the shit. Um, I think there was, like, 60 dudes there, but like I said, he had 300 dudes. So they're like you know the guys got overwhelmed so they got away with what they estimate to be about eighty-seven thousand pounds in gold and silver uh which was the equivalent to about a 10-year salary back then so not too bad a haul for just like laying there on a fucking beach and you didn't even really have to do much of anything to get it so they went back to jamaica with their spoil shortly after and he continued doing pirating nowhere else in florida though as far as i know um, now, interestingly, Jennings is one of the few pirates that actually, they think, retired in semi-luxury. Most of them uh, were killed. Uh, they were either executed or they died violently or something like that. It's, it's not a real sustainable lifestyle. No. Henry Jennings, though, uh, was a little bit of an exception. He did keep pirating, like, after this whole, this first act of piracy here, where he just stole some shit from the Spanish uh, galleons that they had recovered. But there was, in 1718, I thought this was very interesting. In the Bahamas, there was actually an amnesty for pirates. They basically, like, the government of the Bahamas came out and said, if you're a pirate and you um, admit you're a pirate yeah, and, and, like, surrender doing, and you yeah. stop all the pirating yeah, you'll be all within right. the next year, yeah. then you'll get a pardon. Yeah. So Henry Jennings said... <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. So he went over there and did it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, oh, man, I'm a pirate. Yeah, pirate. Because <laughs> he'd been like pirating for like years and years. <laughs> so he did it. Yeah. And he had a fuck ton of money. Yeah. And they said he ended up living in Bermuda. You're right. As a very wealthy, he had a big right. plantation there. So he very had, well he respected. He had a retirement plan. He had yeah. a retirement plan. Yeah, good. He did it. Good. He, did, he said he was like the only guy, one of the yeah. only famous pirates that actually like retired instead of like getting Lived killed or retirement. executed yeah yeah i mean they don't actually know i mean yeah he did come in he did get amnesty so he didn't yeah. get hanged or anything like in that in general people most pirates were hanged most of them yeah that's how most of them died mm-hmm. arrested and hanged by some kind of an enemy yeah yeah that's how they went and I mean, and like I, I said life expectancy was three or four years. And I kind of feel like, too, during the golden age of piracy, yeah. I kind of feel like because there were so many privateers, they weren't as hard on pirates. I kind of feel like after, after the need for piracy wasn't as maybe wasn't as prevalent because there were other sources of income from other like governments. I feel like a lot of governments and royal families and stuff like turned against piracy and then started cracking down on it. 
Yeah. And that's when you kind of saw a lot of... Because so, piracy really kind of, like, declined after about 1730 yeah. or thereabouts. A lot of the pirate stories have to do with what happened after capture. You know? It's like, and there's, I remember reading a lot of stories <laughs> of them being, being in some prison in Jamaica and fucking... Con there are court hearings and them talking to each other out in the courtyard. We're going to hang this time, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we're going to fucking... They're going to kill us. Fucking... And that, that really is... What happened to most of them? I fucking hanged. Yeah. So yeah, the, well, yeah. that's why Henry Jennings is kind of an exception right. because they're like he's what. I mean, they don't know what they don't know when and where he died. So it's possible that he retired wealthy for a little while and then said I miss pirating and then yeah. like went back and then got arrested for some other stupid. That's shit. like fucking Blackbeard or Edward Teach or Thatch, whatever his name was. They're not really sure what his name was. He could have retired. There were several. There were several instances where he could have given it up. I mean, he married the fucking daughter of fucking one of the governors, and he was a celebrity. And he could have just stopped, stopped it, the lifestyle and given it up. What does he do? She makes fun of his socks, so he's like, "Fuck, fuck this bitch," and fucking gives her over to the crew for a mass raping, and then goes back to being a fucking pirate. And then, and then eventually, just because then, of his socks, yeah, making fun of his socks. Men's egos are so yeah, fragile. Making, well, he had holes in his socks. He's like, "Fuck this bitch!" And fucking, he he started. He shared the booty. That's where that comes from. And I mean, I can't to, imagine. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. Anything that you could do. Well, I don't know about that. Anything that you could do that make me mad enough to like just say, "Hey, here, have at it!" Like. Throw someone out for gang rape. I would really have to hate you. I mean, you would have to be like basically Hitler for me to do something like that. You just like made fun of my socks. I'd be like, eh, I like my socks. So I would not get upset about that at all. I don't understand. I don't understand these dudes are just like, they're socks, man. Why are you so upset about it? I don't understand. Like I said, fucking dudes are so fragile. They're so fragile. They're little egos. But yeah, so his socks had holes in it, and he's like, yeah, it's a mass raping for you. Okay. But yeah, fucking Blackbeard. Speaking of Blackbeard, now we're going to talk about another pirate that's so, not Blackbeard, but one that's kind of, sort of, uh, tangentially associated with Black Blackbeard. But we're going to talk about another famous pirate associated with Florida. And I'm going to wait till Tom gets back, because he'll probably want to hear this story, but yeah. Oh, but what I was going to say about Henry Jennings is that even though they do know that he, for a time, was like a wealthy plantation owner in Bermuda and, uh, you know, was very well respected in the city, they don't ultimately know what happened to him. So they like, it's possible that he maybe got in trouble later on and died in a prison somewhere, or maybe he had a family and lived out his life like normal. But if he did, like I said, he would be one of the very, very few pirates to have done that because most of them were executed or died at sea, you know, died in battles. That's basically what you signed up for when you decided to go pirating. Uh, so, yeah, well, he's taking forever. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this. All right. So another famous pirate associated with Florida. And I feel like this is one. He's a guy that doesn't get brought up a lot. Uh, this guy's named Black Caesar. Uh, or Henry Caesar, I've seen him called that as well. Although I think there's confusion because I think there's two different ones that were called Caesar. And I'm not sure if they're all talking about the same guy or if it's like two different guys, like one guy taking the name of the other guy. You know what I mean? But anyway, so Black Caesar, he's kind of like a guy that operated during the golden age of piracy from, you know, 1600s to about 1730 or so. Now, they know for sure, there's a lot of stuff about him that's sort of, like, legendary. They're not really sure if it's true or not. Like, he was a real guy. They know that. Because they know for sure that he was, uh, did actually serve aboard the ship of Blackbeard, Edward Teach, uh, which was called the Queen Anne's Revenge. And he was actually um, one of the guys that survived, like, uh, during the crew when Blackbeard died. Uh, in 1718, Black Caesar was one of his crew members that uh, lived through that. So he actually served on that ship for a while. What are you doing? I forgot my drink. He's just like, he's watering all over the fucking house. 
What's is po where's Pookie in the in the bowl? Uh, so yeah, they do know that he served on the ship with Blackbeard, that he was part of Blackbeard's crew on the Queen Anne's Revenge, and that he was there when Blackbeard was killed in 1718. However, <coughs> however, <coughs> there are a bunch of like uh, myths about his life, um, kind of that have kind of become intermingled with like real facts about his life. Like I said, I'm pretty sure he was a real guy, but it's kind of hard to like separate myth from fact at this point. Um, they think that maybe he kind of like terrorized the Florida Keys, that he was originally African royalty, things like that. Um, but nobody knows like how much of that You're is true. You're talking about black who? Black Caesar. Black Caesar. Yeah. Now, he was African American or African, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so I thought, yeah. I always heard, the story I heard, not so much that he was African, well, maybe he was African royalty, but I think that he was a slave in yeah. Haiti and escaped during a revolt. Yeah. And then became a pirate. That yeah. was the story I always heard. Yeah. I remember so, that guy. Yeah. I mean, he's very, very associated with Florida, that guy, particularly the Florida Keys. Mm. <clears throat> like I said, back in the old world, didn't have much to do with your with your race. It had to do whether or not you could deliver. <clears throat> okay, fucking, and you had people of all different kinds of fucking races and ethnic groups. If they could deliver, they could put food on the table, and they could lead men, then fucking they got it done. All right? Now, the Imperials wouldn't have fucking approved of that. But in a way, this is a weird thing, man. Some people might be like, oh, well, that's fucking crazy. The pirates were kind of, in a way, very very North American. They were very fucking American in a way. They were mostly over here and they had a lot of the same value systems that ended up being in America. And during the revolutionary period, pirates helped the creation of the, of the United States. Pirates were very much a thing of fucking, of, uh, 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 they were kind of Masonic. And the Masonic orders were very kind of like anti-imperial. Uh, they weren't, they were more into like, uh, could you fucking spin a good narrative? Could, was it democratically elected? Did everybody agree on this? Is it, it is it rational? You know, and that's really what the pirates are about. The pirates were actually rational as, vi as, as violent as they were. They were practical because practicality and rationality are very similar so what rose to the top rose to the top there's no denying it so all right so you know what, what i'm talking about huh you, you know what i'm talking about though right yeah yeah okay <laughs> why do you always say that i'm just trying to get on with the story get on with the story <laughs> all right so according to most of the stories black caesar uh, started out as a chieftain in Africa. Um, known for being a real big dude uh, and a very, very intelligent dude and uh, very, very strong. Now, a lot of slave traders had apparently tried to capture him but had failed, but he finally did get captured when him and 20 of his guys, like his warriors, were lured onto the ship by a slave trader. Like, ooh, look at all this nice stuff we have. Come and see yeah. our wares, blah, blah, blah. And so they get on the ship, and uh, unbeknownst to them, like, the guys are like, Shh, okay, we're going to put the ship out now, like, while they're looking at the stuff. Yeah. They did that kind of play. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, I don't know. This is how the story goes. So, uh, obviously, when they found out the ship was actually, like, uh, you know, at sail, like, on the ocean and stuff, and they were on the ship, they were not happy about it, Black Caesar and his men. Yeah. So, they attempted to fight back, but because they were outnumbered, um, and they didn't really have their weapons with them, they were, uh, you know, laid down pretty quickly. So, they didn't like it, so they just kind of, like, sat there, or, you know, while they were going across the Atlantic. Now, apparently, Black Caesar would only befriended this one dude. Uh, I don't know what his name was, but it was a sailor on this ship. And he was the only guy that could, like, give water and food to Black Caesar. He was, like, anybody else tried to do it, he'd be like, fuck y'all, I don't want anything to do with you. This is, this is but one guy, a good movie. But one guy, yeah. This is a good movie. Have they ever made a movie about Black Caesar? Yeah. 
like I said, in, he's kind of like a well-known pirate, like in Florida lore, but I don't know yeah. how well-known he is, like in just general American history. Yeah. Now, so they're on the ship and they're coming up to Florida, and uh, as usually happens in Florida, a fucking hurricane comes up because <laughs> we're just like lousy with the things. Yeah. So the hurricane comes out, and they didn't have, like, fucking weather watch back then. So it's like you didn't know the hurricane was coming. You'd just be, like, in the Atlantic and be like, oh, fuck me. Look at this. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you knew a week ahead of time when the shit was coming. Yeah, just hit you. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like it snuck up on you. So, uh, so yeah, the hurricane's coming. It's going to, like, fuck the, ships, the, the ship up. So uh, the sailor at this point is like, okay, well, we're probably hosed. The sailor who was friends with Black Caesar. He's like, we're probably hosed, uh, so I'm going to go down and I'm going to release you guys. So at least you guys have a chance. Right. So he went in there and, like, uh, let let Black Caesar and his men go. And at that point, um, basically, Black Caesar and the sailor, I guess, they came up and they basically, like, mutinied. They mutinied took over the ship. They took over the ship. They took over the ship. Um, So they're, like, and then they got onto one of the longboats. Uh, with a bunch of shit from the ship, like ammunition and whatnot. And then they safely made it to the shore. Now, apparently, the ship that they came from got fucked up in the hurricane, just like they thought. So, And there were probably uh, likely no survivors. So everybody that got off on the longboat, they were the only people that survived from that ship. So what they would do immediately, they started doing pirate shit. So they're on this lifeboat. And they're like, um, okay, what we're going to do is we're we're going to pretend that, well, I mean, they're not pretending. They're like, we are actually like just in this boat and they're from, you know, in a storm or whatever. So it's like, hey, we need help. And then like when a ship would come over to help them, then they would get on there and take their shit. That's pretty much what they do. Well, yeah, that's that's even in the movie, the fucking the island, like I talked about. Right? <laughs> that's, what they, yeah. that's what they did, like a big weakness, and then fucking get them. Oh my god, yeah. I need help. Yeah. Well, see, yeah, this is why. I don't know why I just thought of like all those scary stories I listen to all the time yeah. about like you're driving on a remote highway at night and like yeah. you see some car broken down and like somebody laying on the side, like oh man, I should stop to help that person. Yeah. Don't stop to help that person. I mean, because that's probably like that's a trap, is what that is. But um, but yeah, so it's the same kind of thing. They're like pretending they need help, and then basically, so they'd you know pretty much pull their guns and they'd be like, "Hey, I'm gonna sink your shit if you don't uh, give us your stuff." And they did this for like many many years. Now the story goes that that Black Caesar and his men like built up this massive massive treasure, and everybody says. That they that he buried the treasure on Elliot Key in Florida. Now no one's ever found it there. I don't even know if it's really there or not. But that's how the story goes. Now What happened to Black Caesar? Well we'll find out. Okay. Just calm down. Okay. Uh now what happened after that? So he apparently had this big treasure over the years. Him and the sailor were best buds and they had like all these other men and stuff. Um but later on him and his sailor that had befriended him on the ship, they had a fight, and of course it was about a woman. Black Caesar ended up killing the motherfucker and taking the woman. You know, so hoes before bros. I guess I guess was how that went. Or bros before hoes. Well, no, normally it would be, but he but didn't. Not this time. He didn't. Not this time. Yeah, that's yeah, why I said hoes before yeah. bros. That's yeah. why that's that's why I inverted well, maybe, it. Maybe he loved her. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or he just didn't want the other guy. This sounds like a good movie. I know. Somebody should make a Black Caesar movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised somebody hasn't. I mean, maybe somebody has. I don't know. I don't know of all the movies in the world. But, yeah. yeah. Like, Black Caesar seems like a kind of a kind of a cool dude. Black Caesar. They're talking about the black king. A black yeah. dude. He's like the emperor. He's like Caesar <laughs> of the ocean. Fucking, that, 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 that's already, that'd be a good movie. <laughs> Fuck all that Black Panther bullshit. That's fucking MCU fake shit. Let's fucking talk about what really happened. That'd be a good one. Yeah. Back in the pirate days. I mean, people love pirate movies. Yeah. And it'd be cool if it was... Because the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are... Yeah. Very, very, very loosely based on some kind of real yeah. shit, but I mean, it's mostly just like fantasy. Yeah, it's based on the ride at Disney more than yeah. anything. These wild ass motherfuckers out on the ocean and shit, no rules. <laughs> but some of the real stories are better. Yeah, I think. Yeah, 
but yeah, so uh, so he started like amassing more crew, like more pirates uh, over time, and uh, eventually like worked up to going out in the op- open sea, like you know getting bigger ships so he could go out in the open sea and like attack ships out there like a real big pirate. So <laughs> instead of just yeah. being instead of just like faking like weakness and then like taking over your shit. Um, and again, they used like a lot of the uh, the keys around the Florida Keys, like for, to hide in, like uh, you know Elliot Key, like Ro- Old Rhodes Key, Mangrove Islands, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's another legend too that him and his men buried 26 bars of silver on one of the islands down there. Yeah. Uh, again, they've never found this. I don't know if it's real or if it's legendary or not, but it's a pretty well known like treasure thing that people look for down there. Uh, this may or may not be true also, but it's fun. He supposedly also had a harem on his island. Yeah. A hundred women. Hell yeah, you gotta collect these hoes. Which he took from... Yeah. <laughs> you gotta collect a hoe. Collecting yeah. hoes from Collecting ships. Hoes, huh? Not only silver bars, because like I got all these yeah. ladies as well. Yeah. Um, probably didn't happen, though. Probably not. Probably just his legend. Probably not. He was probably popular with the ladies, so they had to make up a legend. Oh, he had a hundred... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, a hundred seems like a good yeah. even number. Yeah, a good even number. He had a he had a whole island where he was hiding. Yeah, it's the I, like the some... island of the captive women. That's yeah, a, yeah, there was yeah. a movie called that. I yeah. think it writes itself. He probably had a couple girlfriends. Everybody wants yeah. to see a movie called the Island of the Captive Women. Yeah, I mean, let's not lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in reality, he was probably just a fucking dude who was popular, big motherfucker. He was intimidating, good at what he did. Attracted a lot of fucking dudes who followed him and women who liked him. That's probably all it was. So you're going to have to make a story about that. He had a whole harem, of 100 women on a damn island. Oh, yeah, really? This is all shit that came out of taverns and shit. Pirate bars. That's where all this shit Well, that's the thing. I kind of feel like... part of the story, well, man. Well, it's just kind of like... I yeah. kind of feel like pirates and cowboys and yeah. anything that's, yeah. like, really, like, supposed to be, like, uber-masculine. Yeah, they're going to make mean, stories. Yeah, they're going to, like... It's just going to get more and more exaggerated, yeah. like, over time. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the dude maybe had, like, a girlfriend and... Or, like, a wife and a girlfriend, like, and yeah. a mistress and stuff. And everybody's going to blow that up to, like... It was a throuple. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he's got a hundred. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Because everyone's going to, like, exaggerate it. Yeah. It's like the Chuck Norris jokes. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, that's that's the way reality actually works. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. reality doesn't work like that, but legends about reality. Cause well, the, that's what I'm saying. The reality is always, like, pretty boring. Yeah. Usu- well, usually, not always. But the reality no, is usually, like, was... a lot less yeah. exciting than the stories <sighs> that come along later. But I can, I can navigate through that. I, you know, I've been to those bars. <laughs> I've been to those bars. And he was probably a, just a good pirate who was charismatic. Everybody liked him. And based on that, he was successful. And based on that, they made a bunch of stories about him. This is his PR campaign. Yeah. You meet him, he's probably just fucking cool dude. Yeah, we're going to make all kinds of money. And isn't it? Oh, yeah. But he's, well, he's, he's a regular wheeler and dealer. That, that's probably what it is. And he supposedly, like, other than having all these women, yeah. another thing that pirates did, and I don't know how much of this is legendary and how much, I'm sure this is probably, like, based in fact, but pirates, their whole thing, like I said, was they just wanted to make some money. So if they couldn't yeah. get, like, some booty off your ship or whatever, yeah. if they got people, sometimes they would get people that could be ransomed right. for a whole bunch of money. So one of the stories about Black Caesar is that not only uh, did he have like all these this harem of women on his island but he also had like this big like prison camp yeah. where he kept like people that he would kidnap off ships that were like valuable right. ransom kind of uh, subjects right. so he would keep them there too but I'm not like sure if that's true or not but I think some pirates did do that but to be I don't know like I'm not a pirate obviously but it does seem like a lot of trouble yeah. Because you'd have to, like, feed them and keep them alive and yeah. negotiate all that. I just kind of feel like it'd be much easier to just, like, you what know, raid out, a ship and take the silver bar. What stands out to me is that he was, uh, he had a crew, which means that he was charismatic. He was big, okay, which that kind of folds into that. Because the, the legend said he was big. Um, so he was probably a big, charismatic guy who could lead men. And he was popular. All right. You could not, and this goes throughout every, all pirate factoids, 
you could not be a pirate captain unless you were popular. If you were an asshole, you could never be a pirate captain because everything was democratic. It was between private operators. You were voted into power. Yeah, if nobody liked you, then the crew would right. not tolerate. Right. right. So he was just some big dude who was good at what he did and was popular and popular with the men and popular with the women. That's what I'm getting from from the Black Caesar mythos. Make a great movie. Make a great movie. It would. If somebody needs to make yeah. that. I'd watch it. Yeah. I mean, he was a real person, but they don't really know like how much of the stuff is like really happened or didn't. Well, I'm sure he did normal pirate modus operandi, you know, which is, yeah, you steal shit. Yeah, you hold people fucking for ransom. Uh, you do pirate operations. Uh, if that didn't happen, then he wouldn't have been popular, and he wouldn't have been rem- he wouldn't have been remembered. You're probably been talking about a guy like Edward Teach or Blackbeard, a guy like that. That's all. Yeah, yeah. and like I said, which I'm not saying that's all, because Edward Teach did some fucking badass shit. But it, that's what you're talking about, like an Edward Teach type of guy. And Black Caesar didn't know uh, Blackbeard. He oh, served. He, did? he served okay. on his ship. Yeah, okay. you didn't. You didn't hear me say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of drunk. They said he was there on the crew, like okay. when when Blackbeard got killed well, he in 1718. How, he probably saw how it's done. Yeah. Because fucking Blackbeard was uh, exemplary. I mean, that's Pirate. basically the only yes. thing. One of the only things they know is true about about Black Caesar is that they're pretty sure he that, he was, that he was on that crew. Right. So what they're saying is is that he was from that culture. Yeah. All right. Which means he was from that scene. So he would have had, uh, he would have had the credentials. You know. Yeah. You can't just appear out of nowhere. All right. So, oh, you knew Blackbeard. Okay. Well, that changes everything. You know. That's, that's, it's that's. all who you know. Oh, okay. Blackbeard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that movie. Yeah. If somebody wants to make yeah. it. But, I mean, as of this, I mean, even to this day, there's an island uh, north of Key Largo that's called Caesar's Rock, which is supposedly named after him. And uh, there's a channel there called Caesar's Creek, again, supposedly named after him. Now, as I said, he was a real person. They do know that he uh, was on the Queen Anne's Revenge with Blackbeard. But a lot of the details about his life, they're not really sure if they're true or not because... Some of the legends around him um, maybe came from some later plays and things like that. Like there was a play from 1798, which is called Blackbeard or the Captive Princess, which had some of the details in it, which may or may not be based on reality. And there was also a 1922 novel called Black Caesar's Clan. So maybe some of the stuff might have come from that. But like I said, it could have been based on reality or maybe not. Um, What they think happened to Black Caesar, he was actually taken prisoner by the Virginian colonial authorities. Okay. uh, And he got tried for piracy, but he got acquitted. Okay. Interestingly. Now, they don't really know what happened after he got released, because I think a lot of the legends said that, oh, he got executed for piracy, but he didn't. He did. He actually got acquitted. Yeah. Which means that the people sided with him. Yeah. That's what that means. Okay. I mean, it must have been, yeah. because I don't really think they bitch were real evidence back. The bitch was guilty. Okay, he was a pirate. But the but the people sided with him and said, let him go, because everybody else was doing it. I mean, think about it. It was a real profession of its day. Everybody else was doing it, who could do it. So, yeah, okay, I, I, I get it. He won the popularity contest. Yeah, I guess That's so. what happened. Right. But no one's entirely sure, like, what happened to him after he got acquitted. Okay. They're like, since he was an ex-slave, um, it's entirely possible that he was sent back to his owner. You're right. Um, I doubt that. Or yeah. they said maybe uh, he just went and, like, worked a regular job. Yeah, probably what happened. And, yeah. Uh, so there's... They wouldn't have been able to send him back. He was too fucking... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're no. just saying that was a possibility right. because no. that was one thing because... They cut his ass thing. loose and he went out and did what he wanted and to do. And did what he wanted to do and just yeah. like, yeah. So the Probably record kind money. of like lost track of him. Right. All right. So now let's talk about probably... This is really funny because probably the most famous Florida pirate uh, is the one that has the least amount of historical veracity. 
Jose Gaspar. Now, if you're from the Tampa area, and if you're not from Florida, Tampa is on the west coast, the Gulf Coast, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Every year they have a festival called the Gasparilla Festival, and it is like Mardi Gras, but like I said, it's pirate themed. They have like, parades. They have, it's a big fucking deal, a huge deal, and they've been doing it since the early 20th century, and it's based around a pirate named Jose Gaspar, which I don't know. I kind of feel like I don't want to say it's controversial that he's not a real person. I'm pretty sure that 95, 98, 99 percent of scholars agree that he was probably not a real person. But every now and then you do get some stuff thinking he's a real person. And I'll get into like why that is. But his story was just like so interesting and sort of like emblematic of like all the piracy that was going on in this time period that I thought that I would include it. I mean, it's kind of hard to leave out Jose Gaspar, even if he wasn't a real person, because he's so tied in with like the history of Florida and like Tampa in particular. So here, so Ga Jose Gaspar, um, depending on, there's a lot of different like legends about his origins. Uh, most of the stories say that he was probably born in Spain, uh, probably somewhere around 1756, and that he was in the Spanish Navy and then turned to piracy in about 1783. Uh, most of them also say that he died uh, in southwest Florida during a battle against the U.S. Navy in 1821, but there's a bunch of different variations of what happened in between there. So, in some versions of this particular story, Jose uh, was a, when he was a kid, he was kind of like a um, little bit of a hellion, a little bit of a troubled kid, and he decided, hey, um, I'm going to kidnap a girl for ransom. So, he gets caught, and they're like, well, you can either go to prison or you can join the Navy. So he's like, okay, well, I'll join the Navy. And then he supposedly had a pretty distinctive, like, uh, or distinguished, rather, um, Navy career. And then uh, led a mutiny against a captain who was kind of a dick. And then took off to Florida in a stolen ship. Uh, so that's one version of the story. There's another version of the story that says that Jose was actually a nobleman. And he actually got, like, really high up in the Spanish Royal Navy and became a counselor to King Charles III of Spain. Um, and he was, like, a real popular guy, like, at court. But there was some kind of, like, romantic intrigue at some point. Um, he had, like, two ladies that were after him, and he kind of, like, um, spurned one of them for the other one. And the one lady that was spurned got pissed off and, uh, you know, brought some charges against him. So there was that. Uh, nothing like rapey or anything like that, but basically said he stole the crown jewels of Spain. So, uh, so yeah, the authorities apparently believed her and said they were going to arrest him. So he's like, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. So he basically stole a ship and took the fuck off. And he's like, you guys suck. Um, I'm going to become a pirate and fuck your shit up for the rest of my life. So that was another version. Um, and there's still a third version of this motherfucker's backstory. Um, in this third version, he was uh, a Spanish admiral. Ad See, I did it again. Admiral. I meant to say admiral. Uh, who was maybe not the nicest guy. Um, and he actually did steal the crown jewels in this version. Like, he wasn't just accused by, like, some bitter bitch who did it, who, who he, like, uh, spurned. He's like, so he did steal the crown jewels. They found out what he did, and then he's like, okay, well, now I'm out. So then at that point, like, then he stole, like, the best ship in the Spanish fleet, took off with a bunch of dudes that were, like, friends of his, and in this version, he had wife and kids, but he was like, fuck y'all. And he just took the ship and the crown jewels and is like, I'm out and took the ship and went into the Atlantic Ocean. So those are three versions of where he came from. So uh, in all the versions, though, he eventually ended up settling uh, on the southwest coast of Florida, which uh, at the time, obviously, still occupied by the Spanish in 1783. And he had a ship 
called the Flora Blanca, and he turned to piracy aboard this very ship. He established a base on Gasparilla Island and uh, was apparently one of the most feared pirates in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, all in the Caribbean. He supposedly uh, fucked up a lot of ships and amassed a huge, like, cache of treasure in uh, the period which coincided with the second Spanish rule of Florida. And uh, just like kind of a lot of pirates at the time, so this isn't like way out there, but if he took your ship, uh, the, if you were a dude, they're like, well, you can either join my crew or be cut up and thrown overboard to the sharks. Uh, or if you're a woman, then you will be kidnapped and taken to the nearby isle island and uh there is an island in florida which is called captiva island and most of the stories say that this was where he kept all the women that he took from the ships hence the name captiva uh but yeah the the island is still called that i don't know if it's named because of that but that's the story uh because they're supposed to be like concubines or wives for the pirates or they're going to be like ransomed out so that's where he kept them all and that's why that island is called captiva that's how the story goes now uh one of the most famous stories about jose gaspar from his from his legend this story involves a spanish or a mexican princess depending on who's telling it her name is yusepa and she was actually a, pr a passenger on a ship that he captured and she was a noble woman. Now the pirate is like trying to put the Mac on her right. And she's just like, no, you uncouth monster or whatever. And then he says, I'm going to cut your head off if you don't do what I want. Which seems a little, you know, that's really not the way to finesse your way in, into that. So just saying. Uh, but she, like, good for her. She was like, nope, still not doing it. You can behead me if you want. So he did. But to his credit, he felt bad about it afterward, <laughs> reportedly. Uh, so, yeah, he, he was mad and he cut her head off. But then he felt bad. And so he took her to a nearby island and he named the island Yuseppa in her honor and went out there and buried her himself. I'm so sorry. You wouldn't submit to my rapey inclinations. And so I cut your head off. But now I feel remorse about it. So I'm going to name an island after you. Gee, thanks. Um, there's another island in Florida called Sanibel. And the story goes that this is supposedly uh, named after uh, the guy who is Jose Gaspar's first mate, who is a guy named Rodrigo Lopez. And he had his girlfriend who he had left back in Spain, and her name was apparently Sanibel. So the story goes that the island was named after her. Um... Also, some, like, some versions of the story, too, say that this guy, Rodrigo, was actually the guy that was, like, um, Jose Gaspar was, like, hey, I have, like, his diary or his log or whatever. And he's, like, I need you to, like, watch this for me because it's, like, super valuable. And he was supposedly the guy that was entrusted with the, with the diary. But nobody's ever found it so i don't really know like i said nobody's entirely sure if this guy really existed or not most people think probably not uh so jose gaspar has been associated with many other pirates uh both real ones and possibly fictitious ones um some versions of his story uh have it that he was partnered up with uh the pirate pierre lafitte who was a real guy um and that Lafitte was at the battle that Jose Gaspar got killed at, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, this is a story that makes the rounds a lot, but not super likely. Um, Pierre Lafitte was a real guy. He was uh, allegedly a pirate, but he didn't really, there's no really record of him like hanging out anywhere around Southwest Florida where Jose Gaspar supposedly, that was his like stomping grounds. And he actually, there is record that he had died in Mexico before Jose Gaspar died. Um, uh, ha, on, uh, he's also been associated with Black Caesar or, or Henry Caesar, which, like I said, I'm not, no one's entirely sure if those are the same person or two different people. There's another pirate named Old King John, who may or may not be a real person, <coughs> who he's often associated with also. 
So most versions of this legend uh, come to the same conclusion, that Jose Gaspar died in 1821. Now, 1821 uh, was this, around the same time that Spain transferred control of Florida to the U.S. Now, Jose had decided he was going to retire. He'd been a pirate for about 40 years, and he was too old for this shit, I guess. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I mean, piracy seems like really, I mean... Yeah. Way, may, way more than being a cop. It's like, yeah, I'm really too old yeah, for this I'm shit. But yeah, I'm shit. too old for this shit. So yeah. So he decides he's going to retire. So him and his crew, they go to Gasparilla Island. And uh, this supposedly big treasure cache that he has. So we're going to split all this shit up. Uh, some versions of the story say that it was about $30 million. In those days money. Which uh, I was looking at Wikipedia and they said, now for a comparison... Spain just sold Florida to the United States for $5 million. So $30 million back then was a lot of fucking cash. So he's apparently like giving out all of this $30 million to all of his crew because he's like, yeah, I'm out. I'm retiring. Now, this is again, the story goes. While they're giving out the money, they're like, okay, here's all the money. We can all retire. We can just lay on a beach and drink Coronas the rest of our life or whatever. Okay. You know, it's, I know that's anachronistic. I'm just, that's what's funny about it. But so the story goes that while they were doing that, one of them sees a British merchant ship, what appears to be a British merchant ship, sailing by. And they can't resist it. The pirating impulse is too strong. God damn it. <laughs> we got all this money right here. We could retire forever. But look, there's one of our ship. It's right there. Oh my god, we should totally pirate that shit. And so they do. They got they get in the Flora Blanca and there's like just one more time. Just one more case before I retire. Like I said, it's just like a cop show. So they decide they're gonna do this. And they go out there and the pirates shoot at the ship. Which like I said, they think is a British they think it's a cargo ship. Um, but what happens is that this ship then slowly, just probably like a ha ha kind of thing, they start putting up the American flag. <coughs> it's a U.S. Navy pirate hunting schooner. The USS Enterprise is what it is. And they were being sneaky. And I guess just like going by this place and let's see if the pirates fall for this shit. Look, we're going to pretend. Look, we're a merchant vessel. Come pirate us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they did that. USS Enterprise. And that's a real ship. It's not, yeah, it's not Star Trek or anything like that. This was a real ship. Uh, so, yeah, so they put up the flag and the pirates are like, fuck me. I can't believe we fell for that bullshit. Uh, so there was like a big battle and the Flora Blanca pretty much got torn up by fucking cannonballs. Because like I said, they're a pirate ship. They're badasses and everything. But <coughs> CUS Navy it's a whole like it's a military ship and they have all the cannons and all that kind of stuff so they just like basically made fucking swiss cheese of their shit uh so yeah so the flora blanca starts sinking <clears throat> at this point story goes jose who would not be taken alive god damn it he wraps an anchor chain around his waist and jumps off the ship and he says reportedly Gasparilla, that's what he called himself, I guess. Gasparilla dies by his own hand, not the enemies. And he jumps off the ship and sinks and drowns himself into the Gulf of Mexico, which is pretty badass if it was true. I don't know if it is, but it's it's pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah. Most of the crew uh, that were just minutes before had been like dividing their spoils on the beach until that one last ship came by and they couldn't resist it. Uh, most of them got hanged, as so the story goes, but a few escaped or got put in jail. Um, uh, apparently, one of the survivors was the one that told this story to everybody else. I can't believe Tom missed the whole, like, big dramatic death scene. But... Yeah, I was sitting there getting some cookies and fucking talking to Pookie. What'd she say? What, what happened? Well, now I have to repeat it. No, so now everybody has no, to, no, like, no, everybody has no, to, like, okay. hear it again. So, so yeah. So it was a big dramatic ending. Okay. Was this true? 
Nah, I don't know. I mean, the story's been retold uh, in lots of different versions. Uh, first appeared right around 1900, but there is actually no evidence that Jose Gaspar actually existed as a person. Uh, people, many, many people have done research in Spanish archives. Uh, you know, so like I said, if he was in the royal court, there would have been some record of him. Um, if he was in the Spanish Navy, there would have been some record of him. Um, and if he was as badass and he was like, oh, who's the scariest pirate in the Gulf of Mexico? You'd think somebody would have heard about him. Um, not really. They didn't really find any uh, contemporary newspaper reports about Gaspar Gasparilla, anything like that. <clears throat> or of the ship called the Flora Blanca, which is uh, what his ship was called. And they actually did a search of the United States Navy archives, and they didn't find any mention of Gaspar in the ship's logs or in the official court records of the piracy trials, which were held during the era, of which there were several, and they have records of them. Now, the USS Enterprise, as I said, is a real ship. It was a real ship, and it was assigned to anti-piracy duties in that area and in that time period. But... Uh, at the time that Jose Gaspar made his very dramatic, uh, I died by my own hand and not the enemies, like throwing himself off with a chain and everything, um, the ship was actually in Cuba when that happened. Uh, and where Jose Gaspar supposedly died was in Charlotte Harbor in Florida. So probably not what happened. Now, uh, there's another thing, too. There's a bunch of places in southwest Florida that have supposedly been named after Gaspar like Gasparilla Island, for example. But um, actually that had that name before the story, like before that. Um, the early 1700s, like uh, maps of the area by the English and the Spanish have it already named that uh, before the guy was apparently like active. So there's that. <coughs> um, there are also, you know, it, it's just kind of like, there's really nothing to support him being alive. Like, there's all these stories about him having this big home base on Gasparilla Island, which was like a big compound with a watchtower and all these houses and stuff. But they didn't, like a pirate kingdom, they called it. But they haven't ever found any um, physical evidence of that. And obviously, treasure hunters have looked everywhere for his supposed, like, big fucking treasure. <clears throat> they have found some coins and stuff but nothing that would you know lead to anything like thinking that he's a real person now where did this fucking story come from because like i said jose gaspar there's still books i just read a book that came out a couple years ago that still talked about him like he was a real pirate like in florida history and like i said tampa still has their big gasparilla festival every year which is kind of like based on him you know yeah there were pirates in Tampa. It's like, they're not just making that up. This but, guy just sounds fictional. But this guy yeah. was probably not a real guy. Okay. I mean, it might have been... There was a lot in history. Well, yeah, and like I said, I'm going to get into... This is interesting because this kind of reminded me of... Remember the story that you told me about the pterodactyls and the... Yeah. In the that were stalactites or whatever yeah, in the yeah. cave. Stalactite. This kind of reminded me of how th how that happened. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> like this kind of whole story. I got to drink something because my the old media out. of the United States was filled with bullshit. Okay, half the damn half the damn newspapers lied for a living, which I think they still do. But uh, it was called yellow journalism. And they would come up with all kinds of crazy stories just to titillate the audiences. Well, they so were just like, trying to sell papers, like I said, because back in the old days before yeah. there was any other kind of media, big cities would have several competing newspapers. Yeah. So you always had to have like the best, most salacious, juicy yeah. stories like to get the edge on your competition. Yeah, and there were a lot of really cool stories about airships that sound like UFO stories. And a lot of this just sounds real credible. But no, it didn't happen. You know what I mean? San Francisco was one of the ones where they had this amazing airship story about a gigantic airship with searchlights and big wings, and the whole city saw it. But just because they wrote that the whole city saw it doesn't mean that the whole city saw it. You could write, the whole city saw it. It doesn't mean anything. And then everybody's like, oh, I suppose. Yeah, like, oh, really? The whole city saw it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, there was a lot of that. You know, 
Yeah, like I said, in a lot of ways, I think it was worse back then because you didn't really have, like, the inner... You didn't have any, like, fact checkers. Right. People just, like, put whatever they wanted in there. Yeah, and then they would fucking put in fake witnesses. Yes, I was there on this, 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 and that, and I saw the airship, and a ladder was thrown out of the airship for fucking... From 40 stories high and a man climbed down the ladder and asked me for some tea and I gave him some tea and he crawled back up and my name is Abercrombie fucking Aliens Smith tea. fucking living on fucking Horsehead Avenue on 426 I saw this shit and just because somebody just because this newspaper claimed that it didn't mean anything they fucking claim all kinds of shit you know you can write anything. That's yeah, the problem. well, that's yeah. the thing. Well, yeah, and I mean, ideally, yeah, you would have somebody like check in to see if they were sure or not. But the thing about, well, the thing about the Jose well, Gaspar then you can have a story, fake checker. So you well, the thing about the check. Jose Gaspar story, yeah, yeah. which, like I said, I, this is actually kind of interesting because of that, because of like this, the way that this got. Um, kind of put into like popular culture as like a real guy, even though yeah. he probably wasn't a real guy. He might have been based on like loosely based on a real guy. I don't know, but he probably wasn't a real guy. So there's this dude named John Gomez. Now he was a real person. Uh, he was a guy in the late 1800s, and he lived in this uh, on this place called Panther Key, which is a little island in Southwest Florida. Now, he was um, kind of like a fishing guide, and he was kind of like one of those old, like, eccentric kind of dudes that would just, like, tell these fucking crazy-ass stories. Um, and he would be, yeah, I, I was born in, like, 1785. I was born in, eight, you know what I mean? Like, he would change, like, these stories all the time. And he wrote, like, he, like, told crazy stories. And he was, like, kind of known for doing that. So, none of his stories were true, probably. But he did live all over Florida. He lived in the Everglades, lived in Key West. He lived in Tampa. He lived in that uh, Southwest, uh, 10,000 Islands in the Southwest. Like, shit like that. But he was really known as, like, kind of a, a guy that was, like, a fishing guide. And, like, he would take you out on his boat and tell these fucking crazy stories. None of them were true. No one really believed them or anything like that. Now, interestingly... Um, you know, a couple of magazines that were contemporary, like at the end of the 1800s, like talked about this dude because he was kind of well known in the area or whatever. And um, he claimed, at least in some of his stories, because like I said, he would make up new shit all the time. Some of the stories he claimed, oh, I was the last guy that was on Jose Gaspar's crew. Like, I saw when he wrapped the chain around himself and like threw himself into the ocean and like wouldn't let himself be taken alive and stuff like that. Um, so apparently that was the story that got taken around. But nobody knows if he told that story because the story first appeared in 1900. The story about Jose Gaspar actually first appeared in print in a pamphlet for a resort hotel um, called the Charlotte Harbor Resort Hotel. They were just looking for like cool stories to get some people to stay at their hotel. And they told this story about Jose Gaspar and his whole, like, you know, very, like, uh, kind of, like, dramatic thing that he did at the end. And they said that the source for that story was Gomez. So nobody knows if Gomez actually told that story and they were just repeating it or if they just used his name because they knew he was this, this <coughs> crazy fishing guy that made up shit all the time and it sounded like some shit that he would say. But they didn't really care. They just printed the story in there because it was a cool pirate story and they wanted people to come stay at their hotel. So they put it in their brochure. That's the first time that the Jose Gaspar story appeared in print in 1900. So since then, it's basically like, so Gomez kind of went back and forth. Like, was he like a cabin boy? Was he on the first mate or did they just like put his name on it and nobody knew about that? So... The brochure, uh, like I said, it was this resort and the town, which is now called Boga Grande, it's like kind of like a, it was a burgeoning tourist area at the time. So like I said, this inn had been built there. Um, and it's on Gasparilla Island in Charlotte Harbor. And the guy that wrote the story was a guy named Pat Lemoyne. He was a publicist and, uh, he worked for the company that owned the resort. 
So he's like, we really need like some cool shit. It, well, it's just kind of like any like bed and breakfast nowadays. It's like you have to have a good ghost story or something like that because you want people to come stay there, right? So it was kind of the same thing back then, back in 1900. Well, like we need a good pirate story. There is a lot of pirate lore, like I said, around that area, but we need like a really cool one. So they pretty much made it up. And they said that this guy that was a fishing guide, oh, we got it from him. He was like the first mate on the boat or something like that. And it's just like nobody's going to check. So they did that. Um, so they just like brought people in. So they have like this illustration, which you can still see if you uh, search Jose Gaspar on YouTube, you can still see like videos about it. And you still see the illustration that was on the cover of the brochure. It's pretty famous. Um, and yeah, they said it was from John Gomez, who at that point was already dead. So they couldn't like ask him, uh, you know, if, if he really told that shit or not. So all the stuff about uh you know the the princess and all the stuff about like how he died and all that kind of stuff that they said it was all from him and they did the whole thing about captiva island that's where he kept all the captives sanibel was named after the first mate's girlfriend uh gasparil island was his home and shit like that they also said that there was this burial mound um, which was, quote, 40 feet high and 400 feet in circumference near Gasparil Island, and it had, like, a whole bunch of gold and silver in it, and there was a bunch of human skeletons in there. But, you know, of course, people have looked for that and haven't found it. So it's kind of like this whole romantic thing, and they were just trying to, like, sell their hotel, basically, is what they were doing. Now, 1949, so almost uh, a half century later, uh, the guy that wrote the brochure originally, the publicist guy, he actually was still alive and he gave a history lecture uh, at the Chamber of Commerce in Fort Myers. And he told, he said the story about Jose Gaspar, the biography of everything was, and I quote, a cockeyed lie without a true fact in it. <laughs> he just wrote it uh, because that's what tourists wanted to hear. Right. It was just a cool pirate story and they were trying to get everybody to come. Uh, see, he said, yeah, I heard this like fishing guy and he told these fucking crazy stories. So I was kind of like inspired to write his own and I just attributed it to him because I took some details from him. So basically that's kind of what happened. So uh, what happened after that though? Before he came out in 1949 and said, yeah, I just made it all up. In 1923, there was this Boston historian named Francis Bradley and he was writing a book which would eventually be um, piracy in the West Indies and its suppression, which is actually like a scholarly work and very, very well researched. But somebody uh, sent him a copy of the brochure from the Gasparilla Inn. And he incorporated that into the book without checking if that story was true or not. And because the book overall was very well researched and was you know all stuff that was documented everybody thought that oh the brochure that was in there the story about jose gaspar that was in there that must be true also because all the other shit was true like so this guy's mistake was just basically getting this brochure from whoever in the mail and being like oh hey that's a good story and sticking it in his book and then everybody thought that it was true uh but by all accounts it is probably not so after that happened, because he had published in his book, and that book is one that other later writers referred to when they were writing their stuff, because it was, you know, 99% of it was very well researched and was factual. Um, but the fact that the Jose Gaspar story was in there led many other later writers to put the Jose Gaspar character in their books, like as though he was a true pirate. So what ended up happening after that? whether the story was true or not i think the city of tampa didn't really care they decided that in uh 1904 they were going to do what was originally a may day festival but they said hey they knew the story about jose gaspar and they're like we're gonna do a jose gaspar themed may day festival and they called it gaspar well they didn't call it gasparilla yet but the event was so popular um that what they did was much like in new orleans with mardi gras they got a bunch of local leaders together and they organized a crew. You missed a crew of Gasparilla. And they're going to run the festivities. And this eventually became known as the Gasparilla Pirate Festival, which is still ongoing to this fucking day. 
So what they did, I mean, like I said, they I think they kind of originally thought that the story was true. So they were just like honoring this pirate or whatever. But then like after they discovered that probably it wasn't true, they were like, yeah, we don't give a shit if it's true or not. Because at this point, it's it's just so fictional. It's all parades and everything like that. So I think they admitted in 2004, we don't care if it's true or not, because we know it's probably that. They don't really know. If, if he says, was, Florida has booty pirates. Florida has always pirates. had booty pirates. It will always have booty pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so basically what they do, and they and this goes back to the first uh, Gasparilla in 1904, what they do is they stage a surprise pirate invasion, which actually was like a pretty good idea. Like for 1904, that's like a pretty cool idea for like, a, for like an event. Because like I said, Tampa is very, it was a pirate port. So there was a lot of pirate activity. So it's kind of cool that are like, ooh, we're gonna pretend there's like a pirate invasion, which is kind of neat. So they did that. Uh, and usually, I mean, they always had a May Day celebration prior to that, but I guess it was kind of boring. So they thought, well, let's do that, but we'll pretend that pirates invaded it. And I was just kind of like, yeah, that's a good idea. So it, people liked it so much that they decided they were gonna do it like every year. So basically, yeah, the crew still does it, like I said, every year. And actually, it's it's maybe even longer than Mardi Gras because I feel like it goes on for like a month at least, or maybe two. I feel like it starts at like the end of January and goes until like March maybe. But yeah, so they do like fucking all kind of shit. Gasparilla season, they have the whole thing. And they still do the invasion. Like Jose Gaspar, like somebody dressed like Jose Gaspar, he comes in with his crew and his ship and everything like that. Uh, it happens on the last Saturday in January. They come and like invade the city. They have like a whole bunch of boats come across Tampa Bay. And then they do like this big fucking, they have this big pirate ship that they bring in and shit like that. And then they have a thing where, and they do this every year, the mayor of the city, whoever the mayor of Tampa is at the time, will come out and like give the key to the city to the pirates. Like the pirates are just kind of like, we're here to take your shit. And he's like, here, take it, Mr. Pirate. Yeah, they do that every year. And then the pirates like will do like, woohoo, we got your shit. And they're like, they do like a big victory parade like down down Bayshore uh so yeah they've been doing that since 1904 and it's a massive massive deal I told you I lived in Tampa for a little while and it's when it's Gasparilla you uh, cannot go anywhere like in that area like around downtown Tampa Ybor City anywhere like that you can't go anywhere um they have like they say usually like 300,000 people come to it uh, and it's like a huge boost for the economy, obviously, because fucking fuck tons of people come there. I mean, I, it looks fun, but I'm not, I don't really like hanging out with like big crowds of people, uh, especially outside in this, it, it, you know. So uh, I never did go to it, but I have seen like other things of it. And it does look fun. Like I said, it's, it's like Mardi Gras, but not, I think not quite as crazy and more pirate themed, you know, but it's like that. But they still do it every year. I just think it's funny that they pretend that they have a pirate invasion every year. I told them, like, the mayor of Tampa every year, like, pretends to give the key to the city to the pirates. Like, they took it from him. And then the pirates do a victory parade, like, through Tampa. They Willow's do that. Willow's watching all the way from South Korea. What's up, Willow? Wow, hey. Where are you at, Did you Korea? just got here? Because, yeah. man, I just, like, finished my notes. Yeah. I actually got through my notes without fucking up too much. Her last name is Lee. She might be fucking South Korean. Maybe. Oh. If your name was like Sung or Park, and I'd believe it a little bit more, but Lee is one of the possible ones. She says your cat is so cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. You. She knows it, too. Yeah. Is she in here? Where she's, is she? She's in her little bowl. Oh, she's in her bowl. Yeah. Yeah, she you has a cat tree, and there's a little bowl in it. Little fuzzy she gets bowl. She's in a little bowl. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, a, it's like a perfect fit. Yeah, I was rubbing the bottom of the bowl, and she's looking at me like, huh? What? What? <laughs> why are you, why are you rubbing the bottom yeah. of the bowl? Yeah, it's her like a little hammock. She sleeps in that yeah, thing, like, yeah. all day, man. Yeah. Willow's laughing about what I said. <laughs> Is it Lee Park or Song? Quack? <laughs> I, knew, I used to know a Korean yeah. guy with the last name of Quack. Yeah, yeah. They only, have like, they only have, like, five last names. Yeah. Most of them are Song and Park. Yeah. Yeah, I thought yeah. Par yeah, I thought Park was the most common. Yeah, that's like Smith in the United yeah. Smith or Jones in the United yeah. States. I thought so. Park Lee Quack, uh, fucking. Let me see what else. Oh shit, 
That's about that's the main ones. Tammy says, this has been a very interesting show. Good job on all Thank the you. research and telling. Thank you. Yeah. I was like super you worried it about it before it, I po- started. You made it through it. You almost called me Pookie. I almost called you Pookie, yeah. You <laughs> yeah. I was afraid I wouldn't. Well, because like yeah. I said, I didn't I didn't like that I didn't have enough time. There's plenty. To do as much yeah. research as I wanted. Because right. I wanted to cover some more stuff, but I mean, I feel like that was probably good. Yeah. That was probably good. Yeah. I mean, I, I found it really interesting. I wanted to finish that book because give me, like, hand me that book that's over there. Which one? There's a bunch of them. That, one. no, the one that's under it. Yeah, okay. this book, I bought this in St. Augustine, and it's really, really good. I mean, I haven't got that far into it, but Willow it's says, not. I love your channel. I love your channel, too. Uh, I love your channel, too. <laughs> that sounded yeah. dirty. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this book is called Under the Black Flag, and it's actually, um, it's not so much about piracy in Florida. Like I said, it's more about the misconceptions about pirates, like um, the reality of pirates versus the media conception of pirates. So it's kind of about that. But it's about real pirates, too. And it's, like, it's really interesting. I started, like, reading it the other day. But the one that I read, I read, like, one that was um, kind of based on Florida pirates specifically. And that was, like, pretty interesting. Although, like I said, I do kind of look askance because he did talk about Jose Gaspar so, like he was a real dude. Down. You didn't want to come down now, huh? Oh, she's here. She's here. She's here. She, there's food. Hey, little one. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you left the bowl. You left the bowl. I had to come out of the bowl. Yeah, you Somebody the was bowl. talking about me. We were talking she about She sensed it. She sensed it. Look at her little feet. Yeah. She's like, fuck this. She's like, fuck all this <laughs> Fuck all this shit. I'm out of here. She's looking behind it. She's, yeah, I gotta investigate. (laughs) It's all the same, Poke. It's the same. (laughs) Nothing's changed. She's looking behind the poster. The picture. Hugo's talking about, um, uh, hey Tom, speaking of pirates, we made a couple of replicas. A 50 cal Queen Anne, 60, 90, 70, 20, and a 58 cal Harper's Ferry pistol. First American made gun, 1807. Okay. That's cool. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about it. Okay. <laughs> what are we talking about? Gee. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tom. Yeah, no, no. Are you really that drunk? Yeah. No, yeah. They, they've made a lot of American guns. There were American guns before there was the United States of America. So it's hard to tell what's American. Yeah. Hugo they said, were the same. Didn't matter. Hugo said, great show, guys. Too bad Thank I you. missed like half hour. Yeah. Um, you didn't miss as much as you might think because we started late because we were having all kind of like connection problems. Yeah. You know? All right. Danny Rowling said, Florida Pirates probably made some captors walk the plank in gator-infested water all the time if they actually did walk people to the plank, just saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I kind of feel like... Wasn't that that was a Peter Pan thing too, wasn't it? Didn't that have a crocodile in it, with a clock yeah, in its Captain tummy Hook, yeah. or something like that? Yeah, Mr. Smee. Yeah, and even like the Peter Pan ride at Disney. I don't even know if they still have that. That used to scare me. That fucking crocodile. Yeah, crocodiles are scary. I'm not worried about it. Of course you're not. No, you're not worried not. about anything. No, <laughs> you're not worried about. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Buddy. I don't care. Why doesn't Johnny care? If you're an MST fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> ah. You yeah, got ready? It's I guess. 920. Let's go ahead and shut it down, Jeff. Man, we've been going for three hours and 14 Yeah, you minutes. hungry? Yeah. I'll make something to eat. Come on. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for dropping by this <coughs> evening. This was a fun <coughs> show to do, even yeah. though I was worried about it. But it, it came out okay. Um, but yeah, so be sure to drop by on Friday evening. We'll be doing the sidetrack show. We're just going to talk about whatever bullshit (laughs) flits into our minds, which, you know, that could be dangerous, but, uh, (laughs) yeah. So, uh, yeah, have a good rest of your evening. Have a good day tomorrow and we will see you guys again on Friday evening. Like, share, subscribe, do all that regular stuff. And we will see you again on Friday. Bye.